Ready? Yep. Hello and welcome to episode 58 of the Nerds at Large Gaming Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Darby Hallman. I am Jeff Mayo. Jeffrey, how's your week been? Good, sir. Good. Fourth of July. We party. We, we officially celebrated America's birthday, which is probably not America's birthday. But what, what is Fourth of July? That could probably just early independence thing was time. Yeah. Probably. Or it's George Washington is just like, this is my birthday, so there you go. The entire nation should celebrate. I don't know. We did 4th of July. That was fun. And I played some games. Oh, I played some games. Which is, we need to talk about those games because we're kind of in the post E3, uh, like, blues yeah. when it comes to gaming news. I mean, well, we'll have plenty to talk about potentially next week, Darby, with a certain game. <laughs> yes. Uh, Octopath Traveler comes out in next friday a few days jeff and we can i think it's a good time for us to do that three hour demo thing darby just to get started yeah get why into not? it yeah. why not I'll, I'll probably do that like wednesday or thursday yeah so i, I really don't want it to what? be any time i want to just go oh, straight yeah why not there. just just so we get the head start yeah yeah that is very good that those that carries over that would have been a very that would have been a mistake if I did. yep i think i missed this last time whenever we talked about it for a lot of people it was like i'm not gonna play this why would i do it? it's so close and then they hear it carries i was like okay now i'll play it yeah, <laughs> yeah 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 so we will definitely stay tuned next week we will be talking about project octopath traveler probably depending when we record <laughs> I, st- I love how i'm still calling it project octopath traveler oh, yeah, it's, it's just stuck in my head at this point yeah. but we will be talking about that we have some gaming news to talk about this week so definitely still listen and then the main topic this week we are going to be looking forward to the rest of 20 are we just doing 2018 we're just doing 2018 just 2018 no point in going 2019 that just opens up a lot more other games <laughs> so we don't have three hours to sit here um, we could, but... so, <laughs> so we're going to be talking about what we're looking forward to what we're not all that stuff but before then jeff what have you been playing um i've been playing i haven't been playing much new stuff um so i'm not going to just talk about things i already have mm. without you know having more stuff to bring but i did play Actually set up my VR thing yes last night Ooh. and play two demos I've been meaning to get to Zone of the Enders two, okay, and Wipeout the Omega yeah. Collection both both are games also I mean it's important both are games that are playable not in VR but they have VR modes right which right. automatically makes them more interesting to me <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah um so I started with Zone of the Ender um I guess I'll go ahead and say this I kind of got more motion sick from these games than I have other games, okay. but I, I wasn't feeling great going in. So I'm going to try them again and make sure it wasn't just me at the time and mm-hmm. see if they were the games, because at least for, Oh, for Wipeout, I've heard nothing but great things as far as that goes, but I also played that second. So, okay. I could absolutely see Wipeout being a nausea and do. Oh, I, <laughs> I agree. But people have been saying like, otherwise like there's, it's one of the best as far as that goes. Okay. So definitely maybe so, give it another shot. Yeah. But um, quality wise. Oh, uh, yeah, for Wipeout, it's great. It was crazy, you know, going around. I was like bumping into the walls a fair amount. I, I would be too. Yeah, it was fun, you know, like, you know, shooting the lasers and everything, shooting people. Yeah. It was starting to get the hang of it. No, it's really cool. I want you to try it at some point. How is it? Is it what, like the old Wipeout games? I mean, because I've played Wipeout in the past. I didn't play Wipeout. Long. I describe it. It's pretty much your, your racing and futuristic thing. It's kind of yeah. like F Zero. Okay. But, um, you know, lasers. Yeah. Um, and everything, you get power ups and speed boosts and stuff. And mm. obviously, with the um, VR mode, I assume you can play this way or in a, a third person way in the regular game. But you're in the cockpit. Okay. Yeah. Which is dope. Yeah. The, I I love that from the Drive Club or is it Drive Club VR that we played before? I don't know if that one. I know Drive Club has VR. A lot of those racing. It games was too. one of those. Where it was some racing VR game, and yeah, just being in the cockpit is nausea inducing, but it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So that was a lot of fun. Do you have the full game, or was it like a demo? It's a demo. I was. I want to try it out because on the, you know, the, um, on PSN it has the, um, halfway through the year sale, and that's on sale for like the Omega Collection on sale for like twelve bucks. Hmm. So. Even if, considering, yeah, especially considering, um, we could play that non VR anyway, so yeah, so get multiple uses out of it, yeah, and that could be a fun multiplayer thing, yeah, another one just for the rotation of multiplayer games. I'm definitely, I want to try it out in VR, like it's been a while since I've played your VR, like yeah. I feel like it's been, fortunately, I didn't bring it because I had a step, it's like, and I feel it's, like I'm plugging it, nah, I don't, don't, and Zone of the Enders is really, I played that as well, I was. 
Surprised how long the demo was. I don't know how long it was. It felt like it may have been 20 to 30 minutes, maybe. I'm not mm. sure. It's hard to tell how long you're in there. It's a lot for VR. <laughs> when you're in the other world. Yep, when you're in another world. Who knows how long you're gone. Lose all concept of time. But like um, Wipeout, when you're in VR, you're in the cockpit automatically. When normally in Zone of the Enders, you're in a third-person view. Yeah. Um. So it the way they did the whole VR thing, you were in a cockpit. I didn't know about this about Zone of the Enders. The cockpit is kind of like... You're in this, the cockpit's like in the stomach of the robot. Weird. <laughs> yeah, right. That's what I kind of like because so when you looked up, you could see its head and the arms on the side, that's the shoulders. It was also cool because um, one attack you can do in the mech is you hold up a thing and you kind of do a little charge ball, like mm. a spear ball from Dragon Ball and throw it. So you're able to look up when you know and you see the arm like in the thing charging. That's pretty cool. Yeah, like you get the scale of like how big that arm is in front of you. <laughs> yeah, and then obviously you can see where you get to fly around. And yeah. all that kind of stuff. And I got used to the controls a lot more as it went on. Mm. Um, so is this like... I mean, I don't even know that much about Zone of the Enders. It's period. Zone of the Enders 2. Okay. Like the old game. But it's re-releasing in September for 30 bucks, which is cool. Yeah, um, yeah that's pretty cool. Um, but they, deci- they just decided to go ahead and make the whole thing playable in VR. Okay, so it is the game. It's not like You it can play it regularly... Mode. Or you can play the whole thing in VR. Interesting. That's that's cool. Yeah. Have you so did that one also make you feel a little sick or something? A little bit. But again, I wasn't feeling great going into it. Yeah. I mean, is it something? Do you think you would? Can you can't? Oh, first of all, I think the most important question: Can you switch back and forth? Like, can you drop out of VR, go to normal, and yes. then play a little bit and yeah. then go back to VR? Okay, I don't see that, why not. That, I assume it's good. like Resident Evil, like that. You can just yeah. When you have the VR thing on, it either switches automatically. Obviously, with Wipeout, you can do it either way, anytime, because mm. it's just individual races. Yeah. But for Zone of the Enders, it said in the beginning, do you want to play in VR mode? Because I had the headset on, it's like, yes. Okay. So I could, I can get out well, of that I feel like that's something that pe- like, people don't think about enough. Like, at least me, I always, I want to be able to have the option to play back and forth. Because if a game is, you know, a big... It, I imagine the zone in there is just decently long, or like you know, at least a full campaign. Oh, you, you can look curious. up. Um, but when it's a long game like that, and it's all in VR, I probably it would I would probably struggle to finish it all like that. But if you give me yeah. the option, like we talked about with Skyrim, how I would never play this a hundred plus hour RPG all in VR. But if I had the opportunity to switch back and forth at will, then I might do it, and that. Same would probably apply for a Zone of the Enders. I think that's an important thing uh, to get. Main story is six and a half. Feet. Main plus extras is eight hours. Okay. Not crazy long, but... Yeah, but it is a long time to be in VR. I mean, yeah. like, you at least like the opportunity. Op- yeah, it's op- kind of like Resident Evil 7. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is also the same thing by the regular game you can play in VR. I need but, to get back to. I mean, Giant Mechs and Racing, both of these just seem obvious for VR. <laughs> yeah. I will say the one negative thing is um, for Zone of the Enders VR is when you're fight, at least in the when I was, the area I was playing, there were a bunch of these little things flying around and you can get up and close and attack them. Yeah. It just kind of was weird because you were slashing and you were just moving really fast. You can't really tell much what was going on. Mm-hmm. But when there are less opponents or you're flying around and, like, shooting them, they're a lot, it's a lot cooler and you get more of a sense of what's going on. Okay. Was when I was just close in and, like, spamming the attack button and just kind of, like, stuff was just happening. Mm. Couldn't get really a sense of exactly what's going on other than you were attacking things. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Also, something that else is cool, I'll just say, that they did for VR since you're in the cockpit. It t- To your r- up in front of you and to your right is a little scaled model of your mech. So, you can... S- and it moves with the way your mech oh, is moving. Okay. So even though you're not in third person, you can see how how your mech's moving okay. without having to look, you know. Yeah. Completely how it's moving. That's just that seems useful. Yep. And you like then obviously see the body of your pilot and yeah, because it seems like you could lose where you are in yeah, VR, yeah. Move, especially moving around this mm-hmm. gigantic. And they did mech. a good job of letting you know where you go because they have a little arrow thing on the on the model of the mech to let you know, hey, this is where you're supposed to. Okay. Gotcha. Area you're supposed to go and stuff. So. Gotcha. That's cool. That's plan. Sounds cool. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like something I want to see more of. Do you think you'll buy Zone of the Enders? Are you waiting to see? That one, I may wait, especially since it's in Sep- September. September. <laughs> um, I may wait to see more help, more impressions from people playing yeah. the VR. Wipeout, I'll probably just go ahead and get, since it's on sale now. It's $12, yeah. 
and we can play outside VR, and that'll just be a fun non Mario Kart racing game for us to have. Yes, yeah, another racing game for me to lose at. Yes, all the time. no, that's one Alex will probably dominate. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> that's a lot. That's at least closer to a serious racing game. So yes. Yeah. So, what have you been playing, Darby? Um, not a whole lot new. I've been re- revisiting Final Fantasy VII for yeah. a potential upcoming series. They should get excited for it, but I won't talk about it too much right now. Um, but other than that, I've I feel like I I just want to reiterate the fact how much I am loving Mario Tennis. <laughs> <laughs> I talked about this on whatever two podcasts ago, but I was like, because last week I guess we did get two either. podcasts ago, yeah, yeah, it was two podcasts ago. But um, well, even. Then it, it was not, you've just been loving it more since then, so yeah, not even this, so we you didn't even have it then. Oh, yeah, that's right. I didn't, okay, yeah. Two so, weeks ago, I we just played it for a little that's bit. That's right, that's right, that's right. So, yeah, this is actually the first time I bought the game. I the stats finally came up for how long I've been playing it. It's 10 hours. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I used to pass me. I'm double you. I looked on you, oh. and you're five <laughs> hours. I'm, I'm and a good bit of mine was us playing to yeah. multiplayer. Yeah, so I am at 10 hours. It's just. It's so much fun to just, like, uh, like, this is, I think, where the Switch excels is that quick game you can pop up and have it there for, you know, you have 20 minutes or you mm-hmm. wake up in the morning. Before you get started with your day, you can just do something. And I feel like that's where the Switch excels, but I haven't had too many games that struck with me like that. Like, I, I admire Stardew Valley and stuff like that a lot, mm-hmm. but it's not necessarily my thing, and I was kind of waiting for something like that. Odyssey kind of was that to a point, but this is perfect, yeah. where the mechanics and everything are so good, and it's so quick to get into a match. Oh, yeah, we mentioned this when we were talking about it, you know, just on our own, like yeah. how instant when you click the game and everything, you're just immediately at the title screen. Like, and that, that's, <laughs> that sounds like such a small thing, but it's really not. Yeah. Because it makes me, I would probably play this game a lot less if there was like loading screens, but there's like no loading screen. You click the game, immediately you're up in the thing, you do that, you go to a match, you're in there immediately. Yep. And the matches are just long enough to where you can have this kind of mind game with your opponent and you can have these amazing comebacks and everything, but it's not so long that it's a distraction of mm-hmm. you, know, you being able to play it really quick. So just from that perspective of ease of use, it's amazing. And like I I'm still feel like 10, 10 hours in and I've done like none of hardly any of the adventure mode because who wants by to? the way, the adventure mode is straight garbage. It's terrible. <laughs> But the only reason anyone would want to play it is to get the, um, the, the, stages, the stages, which I do want the stages. So maybe I'll choke through it. But honestly, at this point, I might not because I'm having so much fun with the other mode. And, well, it's a chore. And if you don't know the adventure mode, it's like the story mode thing, but it's almost nothing to do with actual regular tennis. It's these yeah. like little weird mini games or challenges I involving mean, even the mechanics. I'm okay with those, but the problem with these are some of them feels like to actually get it done is random and they're just frustrating and difficult and not in a fun way like no, when you get no. done with it, it's like yes i finally did it it's more like oh thank goodness i and finally you don't did it. actually feel like you're improving with yeah. the mechanics because they'll be like I'll, i understand what they're trying to get me to do it's like i should lob to hit this i should go under to hit this but like the targets are so small that it's basically just trial and error over and over again yeah. and then like the bosses like have such a large hit bar that it's like just nothing about that adventure mode is fun and it's very just kind of tacked on yeah like you say you don't feel like we're getting better me and you have just gotten better by playing as each other or playing some online or stuff and like the adventure mode does not prepare you for that at all you need to Mm -hmm. just go play online but but that being said that's the part of the game that matters the least to me because the actual mechanics the longer no, I yeah. play, 10 hours in, I'm still playing, and I still feel like I'm getting better and better oh, every yeah. single match. I feel like we both, I mean, I was even playing more, but even just when I'm playing, and like this stuff came back, like me yeah. and you got a lot more just to using the right stick and using that stuff oh, as well, yeah, yeah. and using um, the slowdown thing a lot better and just everything. And the super yeah. meter, like super um, moves and everything. And what I was worried about was that it was just going to become kind of like, okay, there's only so many ways you can play tennis and like, I'll play some good people, some bad people, but there's kind of a limit to how different. No, when I play online, like people have very, like very different, drastically different play styles. And you kind of have to learn what they're going to do and try to like, you know, learn which way they're going to go. There's a lot of surprising depth for a Mario tennis game. Best finding game of the year, Darby. (laughs) 
And like this is <laughs> legit, legitimately like this is probably one of my favorite games this year. I'm really, really enjoying this game. Nice, nice. And I, it's one of those things. I don't know if we mentioned that last time because it's been two weeks. We talked about it. I like how each character class does feel different. Even yeah. some characters within the class feel different. Yeah, which yeah, even like Rosalina feels different than um, Boo, and they're both yeah. tricky characters. There's a lot like I'm terrible with speedy characters, but I feel oh, like yeah. I'm pretty good with powerful and technical. It's you can definitely. It's like a fighting game. Mm-hmm. You can be good with one character and bad with the other. It's like they nailed it. They nailed it when it came comes to the mechanics and everything yep. there. And it's strangely, if they I feel like when we we're talking. With the way this game went, it made us more excited, more hopeful for Mario Party. <laughs> it does, yeah. Because it's kind of, with Mario Party and uh, Mario Tennis, when we saw the first trailers and some first gameplay, we were both like, this feels better than the last games. And, so- and, and we feel and we, you know, we feel like we were right with Tennis, so it makes us hopeful for Mario Party. This could be the year of redemption, like yeah. the two games that they kind of messed and up just on before. solidifying the Nintendo console as the go-to multiplayer thing because, sorry, at the end of this year, if everything goes right, um, there's more I'm forgetting. We'll have a good Mario Kart, mm-hmm. a good Mario Tennis game, Mario mm-hmm. Sports game, a good Mario Party, and, and Smash. And Smash. Yeah, and whatever cool. other third-party stuff going on there, Overcooked and Runbow and stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Runbow's awesome. That's a yeah. big deal. And, yeah, Overcooked, too, is in yep. October, right? Or August, August, I think. August, yeah, even, even sooner. Let's go. So... Mario Tennis, you should definitely consider picking it up, anyone listening. Mm-hmm. It's super, super good. Obviously, if you want it just for the story, man, don't. <laughs> no, but... I, I mean, I'd I argue even if it was good, it, it's not worth it just for that no, alone. No. Um, obviously, obviously, we got this. I was hoping for a good story, mode just to add on to it, but obviously, my hope was um, it'd be a fun multiplayer thing, and that's what we're getting. <laughs> yeah. I just wish that there was a way to unlock the stages through the online, through the yeah. mul- the multiplayer. Just, like, play a certain amount uh, of matches or something. Yeah. And also, what's cool what they're doing with the character things is each month, um, you can unlock characters from doing the tournaments. All you gotta do is do one match. Yeah. So and, just, and and if you don't do that, you just get the character at the end of the month. Yeah, it incentivizes you to hey go check out this tournament, which is yeah. pretty cool. It's a it's been, yeah. It's I'm okay with that being the way they were allowed the DLC characters and that's fine, man. It's free, and it's free. <laughs> it's free. All Her right, Diddy's next. All right, Jeff, let's get into the news. News jingle, 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 jingle. I guess I can. We should open. We're news vamping. Okay. Since we're a po- we're in a post E3 world, we are not much is going on right now. But I was able to gather some news stories. <laughs> Jeff's just crawling on the ground, begging for news. Just please, someone, please, someone. Jason Schreier for the talk. You release a game, Jason. We need your scoop. Yeah, Jason, release a game. <laughs> yeah, I, man. If Jason Schreier wants to release a video game, I'll play it. Yeah. <laughs> when okay. you've done all the scoops you can possibly do, you run out of challenges. Yep. Okay. Here is the story for Jason. Over the past few months, the wildest rumors in video game industry circles haven't involved the PlayStation 5 or Xbox 2. Please don't let that be the name. Please, I, like, can we, can we pause and say I'm really, like, I really am tired of people saying Xbox 2 because it just, like, unnerves me of, like... And I wouldn't, I honestly wouldn't put them past it to call it that, but I don't think it's going to be. So can we just not make that a thing? I mean, no matter what, Xbox One's not a good name. Oh, definitively. Yeah. Even though it's become part of the vernacular, it's still bad. Yeah. The most interesting chatter is centered on a tech company that's been quietly making moves to tackle video games in a big way. Google, the conglomerate that operates our email, internet browsers, and much more. We haven't heard many specifics about Google's video game plans, but what we have heard is that it's a three-pronged approach. One, some sort of streaming platform. Two, some sort of hardware. And three, an attempt to bring game developers under the Google umbrella, whether through aggressive recruiting or even major acquisitions. That's the word from five people who have either been briefed on Google's plans or heard about them secondhand. Google has been exploring video game initiatives for most of the decade. In 2014, the company is reportedly poised to acquire Twitch before Amazon swooped in. Rumors um, pergolated for years that Google was also attempting to launch an Android-based console similar to Amazon's Fire TV, but then it happened. In 2016, the Google incubated studio Niantic um, scored one of the biggest gaming successes of the last decade with Pokemon Go. I didn't know Niantic was at Google, or at least I forgot. Yeah, I didn't know either. But it had spun out into an independent cup. Okay independent company the year before there we go <laughs> yeah. and google has a long history of hiring game developers for projects that never quite materialized in recent months however the chatter about google has gotten louder at the game developers conference and 
March of this year, Google representatives met with several big video game companies to got Gauge interest in a streaming platform, which is codenamed Yeti, sources said. This isn't a Google's Yeti was first supported by the website The Information earlier this year. Google also t took meetings at E3 in Los Angeles a few weeks ago, those sources said. And from what we've heard, the company is looking not just to woo game developers to the Yeti service, but to buy development studios entirely. Google did not respond to a, to a request for comments, and there's, of course, a lot more on Jason's article. Yeah, yeah, so definitely go check that out on Kotaku.com. Yep. Um, what's your take, Jeff? It's like, I don't want another game console to come out. <laughs> I, I don't want another like, company to throw their hat in the ring. Well, and I feel like, and, and I mean, maybe this will look stupid in the future, but I at least feel like right now with the way the industry is, even someone like Google, I think, like, I think the hardware console market is already too crowded. Yeah. And even someone with the money and backing of Google is not going to be able to break it. At least not if they're trying to compete with PlayStation and Xbox and Nintendo. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. The only reason the three of them coexisting works is because Nintendo's is kind of separated from PlayStation and Xbox. Yeah. Things would be a lot more eh if Nintendo was going uh, the Xbox PlayStation. I route. think Nintendo would have already collapsed at this point if they yeah. if that's what they were trying. If that is what they had been trying to do for the past. Or one year. of the other ones, depending if they did it very successfully. It, it, yeah, <laughs> one or the other. It really... The way that it's structured right now, and I'm not saying it couldn't change, cause it's been different in the past and it could be different in the future, but right now, as far as like home consoles, it really seems like it's a two competitor market. And yeah. it's just, and they're so grounded that it's like anyone else who comes in is just going to be driven out. Even with Google, because like, yeah, Google could put a bunch of money on it, but st people still have to know what it is. And people still have to like stop playing on this console and go get that one. And I just don't f see yeah, that happening. They have to. For Google to be successful, like let's say just hypothetically, yeah. Again, they, just the mindset they are going to try to do a PlayStation slash Xbox kind of console. They need to make sure they have the third party games right away. They need to have and, exclusives right away. Right they away. need to have the online infrastructure ready right away. No, you and, cannot stumble at all, or yeah. you're just going to fall apart. And even if you do all that, try to do all that stuff right, it's still probably not because. Like, yeah, even if Google pays these third parties a lot of money to make sure they're putting their games on there, they're not going to stop putting them on Play PlayStation where there's 80 million consoles out there. Unless they like, straight up buy these third parties. <laughs> unless they straight up buy them. And I guess it depends on how hardcore they're trying to go in with this. Google buy but, Bethesda. <laughs> I mean, like, that that's what basically would have to happen. Is Google would have to, like, throw their money around to crazy degrees and I don't think there are degrees that they're yeah. going to be willing to do. And Google is not afraid to try things and then they fail in a few years and they quit them. I mean, all big companies They wipe their this. tears with $100 bills. Exactly. So <laughs> this is what I'm saying. I could 100% see this coming out. And then in two years, they'll be like, oh, remember this? You yeah. remember the Google X whatever? <laughs> I can't think of a, a flashy name. Chromebox. Yeah. Google Station. I don't know. Yeah, we'll be like, you know, RIP Google's thing. So, basically, I don't see this actually going anywhere or yeah. being anything big. Unless it's something else. Unless it's something that's not, you know, like like the um, Ouya or whatever, but different. Where it's like, it's competing on a mobile console level mm -hmm. thing, not a uh, PlayStation level. So, we'll see. But... I don't think this is really anything. If yeah, I, if I again, it'd be one of those things that comes out and fails, or it happens to be good, and then it causes one of the other ones to collapse. Because, again, there can only be so many. Yeah, I don't feel like we're in a, in a market where... And the timing has to be good, because if it comes out, let's say, it comes out a little into the next generation, when the PS5 and the Xbox, whatever, is out, are people really going to... Um, go and get the Google thing when either they already have those consoles, the newest consoles from them. Yeah. Or something that already has a built up library. I mean, a, yet another box to throw money at. And it's yeah. like <laughs> to go out and buy a whole thing. Of a, yeah. It's just, these things are like, they were on the cheap in comparison to how much like hardware and stuff's in there, but it's still a lot of money. And yeah, like, what's going to make me go buy a Google thing instead of buying PlayStation and Nintendo's boxes and maybe Xboxes with the way that they're going now? You know, I don't know. Yeah. I don't think it's much of anything. Yep. Okay, let's see. Next thing comes from Matt Wales from Your Gamer. 
Katara Yuchikoshi, creator and director of the wonderful visual novel mystery series Zero Escape, which spans 999, nine hours, nine people, nine doors, future sl- virtues, last reward, and Zero Dilemma, has revealed first proper details of his latest venture, Murder Yarn AI The Somnium Files. AI The Somnium Files unfolds in a technologically advanced modern day Tokyo and begins with discovery of a body that has its left eye gouged out. Enter Konami uh, Date Date, um, a detective with a cybernetic eye on the trail of a serial killer. Thanks to the AI helper in his eye, Date can peer into the mysteries of witnesses and suspects in order to extract new information. These memories, explain y- Yuji Koshi, are like dreamscapes and are called Somnium, from the Latin word for dream. AI The Somnium Files has snagged Yusuke Kozaki as lead character designer, who previously created characters for the likes of Fire Emblem Awakening, No More Heroes, and Osu Tatake Oendon, never heard of that. And Spikes um, Chunsoft says the game is coming to Switch, PS4, and PC. Was there a trailer for this? Because I actually did not see that. Yes. What did you think of it? I think it was cool. It's just a little teaser trailer. Um, they didn't really show much. There was an actually announced an anime as- expo that's going on right now. Okay, okay. Yeah, a bunch nice of crazy sense. stuff going on there. Nice um, and I partly brought this up because, well, not much news. And I'm actually interested in this because I played um i think it was virtue's last reward and enjoyed it a lot okay so what was that on um i think i think i played on vita oh, okay well there's a lot of big names tied to this at least yes oh i guess if people are interested in the zero escape series is actually uh like a bundle thing that came on ps4 i believe recently at least okay. yeah okay. yeah so i don't know if they use the word virtual novel for this but odds are it probably is based on the other ones but even then like it had some puzzle elements to it not strictly, mm-hmm. not strictly vi- vi- uh, visual novel. Yep, at least the game I played. Right. So I am excited. Always happy to see these kind of games. Just like straight up saying, "Hey, it's coming to Switch." That is always a good thing, and it seems to be happening no, no, a lot well, more. <laughs> yeah, and just a kind of virtual novel thing. If it's like that on the Switch, will be cool. Yeah, and again, I like this developer so. That's <laughs> good to me. So check out that trailer. Oh, uh, and I will. Apparently. More games come straight to the Switch? Yeah. Like Valkyria Chronicles. Yep. <sighs> but not in September, though. <laughs> <laughs> that would be preferable to not be in September. Yep. Yeah, I guess we'll have you look at that trailer later, Darter. Yeah, I apologize for that. Yeah, it's all good. I kind of forgot that we had one. Okay, next thing. We're staying with Euro Gamer, but we're going to Tom Phillips. Tom? Last October, EA shut down Visceral Games, which had been working on a secretive, underwrapped Star Wars project led by Uncharted creator Amy Hennig. The game... Codename Ragtag was said to be too linear by EA bosses, and the development was instead pivoted to EA Vancouver. Since then, while reports have emerged of its troubled development, we've heard nothing about the aftermath, what had happened to Henning, or what the future might still hold for the game under its new guise. Today, or I guess two weeks ago, whenever, a week ago, whenever this happened. (laughs) Ages um, ago. Yes, a plain catch up. At the Game Lab conference in Barcelona, Henning um, revealed to your gamers Rob Purchase. Um, that she had actually parted ways with EA as of January this year and was in the process of starting up her new independent studio but had not yet had the chance to announce the change or set the record straight. Any regarding the studio, quote, I'm working independently and staying independent. I just started my own small little independent studio and I'm consulting with some people. I'm hoping to bring some people on board. I would love to have a little company of about six to eight people, 15 at the most, and do some more projects, do some VR stuff. I'm consulting with some VR companies and doing a ton of research because I haven't played a lot to immerse myself in it. This, to me, seems like the right move for Amy at this point. Yeah. It seems like, I mean, she is, you know, one of the most respected develop, like, developers and, like, heads on games that I can think of. But she has just had a lot of bad luck recently. And a lot of these people, even when they have successful projects, after a big thing, they want to go do smaller stuff like yeah. this. This makes sense to me. For just go make some games, like get some releases out there, mm-hmm. like explore some new stuff. Selfishly, I kind of wish it wasn't VR because I like to play her games, and that probably VR makes me more interested. Like, yeah. What does an Amy Hanning uh, VR game look like? But that's exciting. Like, it's exciting for her, I'm sure, to be able yeah. to... She gets to do something new, something smaller, and it's, like, something she can just control, not mm-hmm. having to behold to EA or Sony or Naughty Dog, any of these big, giant companies. It can kind of just be her thing. And it's we get to see, like you said, what is 
VR look like from one of the most like well respected and well known developers? Hopefully, of all time? hopefully, depending if when, you know it comes out as PSVR, not just hopefully the yeah. PC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's it's still it's very interesting to me. I'm, I mean, I'm glad to finally I'm glad to know what happened. You know, it's though I could say this: Sony's probably hearing this and like calling me up. <laughs> Because I, I I bet and I bet she no, I bet she's not interested. No 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 I don't mean like Sony buying it or anything, but being like whenever it comes out, marketing is like if it's a PSVR title, putting it, mm. marketing it. It's Amy hit by you know, yeah from okay the yeah, Amy hit, yeah Uncharted, Uncharted yeah. Amy hitting here's a PSVR title from her. Oh, yeah. That's what I mean. I don't mean buying it of course. Yeah no. yeah yeah. That goes completely against what this means. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying that could be a good thing for both of them for Sony to put it in a conference or some VR related thing. Oh absolutely. Yeah. You absolutely need to market this and like the very first thing from the from Amy Hedding, the creator. Yeah. Uncharted, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's exciting. I mean, I'm sure this will be a ways out before we get to see anything, but I wish the best for her because I I hate that <laughs> between Uncharted. I hate reading that old thing. It's the depra- EA it's bosses depressing. found it too linear. <laughs> <laughs> you can it just sounds so slimy. So yeah. slimy and just I mean it's gross. EA. Uh, it's, it sucks. But good luck. Yep. I, hope, I hope everything works out. Yep. Okay. Next story comes from Hayden Taylor from GameIndustry.biz. But that the Game Studios remains one of the few big developers not owned by a platform holder that hasn't moved away from almost entirely single-player experiences into games as a service. While many major developers and publishers are still including single-player modes in their games, there's a clear trend away from this, sparking a recent debate around the death of single-player. Uh, although the announcement that Fallout 76 will be a shared world survival game may have added credence to that argument, studio head Todd Howard says it doesn't represent a permanent departure for the company away from single player experience. Um, let's see. He tells GameIndustry.biz, quote, he, it doesn't mark the future. Um, corporately, we have, we've done a mix. People forget sometimes. Elder Scrolls Online is one of the biggest online games in the world. We have Fallout Shelter, which we keep updating, and Elder Scrolls Legends. Anyone who has ever said this is the future and this part of the game of gaming is dead has been proven wrong every single time. We like to try it all. For a long time, we wanted to try a multiplayer game, and we had this idea. We shouldn't be afraid. We should try it. Uh, did I realize that was it? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this uh, there was definitely like it's funny to say to show the. Oh, uh, Bethesda was like save player one, and then the very next year, there's Fallout to go. Yeah, but even player. like Todd Howard said, when, 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 when we kind of forget when we talked about this was Fallout Shelter and Elder Scrolls Online is a big hit. It was already well, and I think that that's just like an easy punchline to make. Yeah, but it's not like. If, but the problem is, some people took that a little too seriously. <laughs> people did. People did. I mean, it, it's a funny joke to make, but at the end of the day, still Bethesda is still one of the developers that's supporting single player the most. Yeah. To 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 its own detriment. I mean, like Wolfenstein, Prey, and Dishonored Two were all apparently really, really, really good games, but none of them performed well. Yeah, and it's one of those things that during those um, multiplayer things. Um, like Elder Scrolls Online and Fallout Shelter and I'm Elder Scrolls Blades whenever that comes out. Mm. Those are the kind of things that could help them fund those single player projects and help yeah. them if those things don't do as well. Yeah, and they're still, I mean, they're still supporting them just because they venture in other territories and make money off them doesn't necessarily mean that those they, and as weird as the announcements were, they kind of showed you, hey Starfield and Elder Scrolls 6 are coming these are the single player things that you want from us on yeah. the way so. right, speaking of starfield i always put this other story in there but i didn't feel like it was worth putting a whole thing in there apparently he, i think was todd howard was being a little cagey like this could potentially be this generation of consoles <laughs> and like by next gen he meant the way it played or something i don't know <laughs> uh, People are way too loose about next gen. We we, yeah. we need to nail that down. It, it was a joke for so long that it's kind of become legit. We still make the joke. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, Remember when we played Tales of Zillia? Yeah, I know. I'm part of the problem, but it's become legitimately confusing at this point. But And yeah. I'm still going to continue making the joke. No. Starfields could be on next gen. <laughs> Probably. I mean, it could be cross gen, but it's going to be on next gen when it releases, I believe. Yeah. But... Single player games are not dead, and everyone who's saying it is it's hyperbolic or it's hyperbole. You look at God of War. Look at <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's so many yeah, so many games coming out. No, no, no. Um, but you know what is dead, Darby? What's dead, Jeff? The likelihood of Rocket League Two. 
This comes from Eddie McCook from GameSpot, and don't worry, it's not as bad as I made it sound there. No. Rocket League has been one of the gaming of gaming's biggest success stories of the past few years. Launched in July 2015, man, it's been three years already. Yep. The game has 45 million registered players by developer Sionix's latest count, with between 6 million and 7 million people playing every month. Hot damn. Given the game's huge success, you might be wondering if a sequel is coming. It's not, at least not anytime soon, according to game director Scott Rudy. Rudy, who joined Sionix earlier this year, told GameSpot in an interview that the studio is focused on treating Rocket League like a platform. The studio is pouring resources into supporting the game with new content instead of making it um, a full on sequel quote that's preferable to do games of the service. The most valuable thing in our game is our fans. A lot of the stuff we do is focused on um, keeping them with us, keeping them interested and all hyped up about our game. We want to provide a really good experience for players to have fun for years to come. He added, We wanted to keep this going. I don't know what I'd do with Rocket League 2. I'd rather do more to expand the existing Rocket League. It's doing great. There are a lot. A lot ahead of it, so yeah, we have no plans for Rocket League 2. No, this is the best news for Rocket yeah. League. I mean, it was the obvious one, but it's also the best. Because yep. if any game ever made sense for games of service, I think Rocket League is probably the poster child for that. Seeing And the, Overwatch. Those two. Those like, two, definitely. Because, I mean, because the big appeal to them is their core mechanics. And it's something, yeah. you know, the biggest thing that is great about rocket league is not something you would change which is the core mechanics of the soccer like gameplay and everything everything that's added on there is just the stages and the maps the, and the maps the skins. and the skins and everything else like that you don't need a second one for a second rocket league 2 for that and psionics made like an like an uncomprehensibly like large amount of money off of this game because the development cost was so low and they have 45 million players. Yeah, I think I remember even when this thing came out, I was thinking, I can see this becoming a big deal because well, it was such a simple concept that I could see people grappling onto. Yeah, and th that's why, like, because of that, they can afford to not have Rocket League 2. They can yeah. afford to keep supporting this game and do this, and as long as people are playing it, there's no reason to, mo to move on to that. No. And in fact... A lot of games, like, I think games as a service can be problematic because like, they're trying to nickel and dime you for everything, and that's how they're making their money. Rocket League already made its money, so I would actually and, be and so. <laughs> I would actually be disappointed if they were saying, like, oh, we're, yeah. we're going to do a Rocket League 2, or, or the, if that was even on their roadmap. Now, here's the thing with, we, I think we talked about this, not, you know, not on camera or anything, um, a little before in Overwatch. The interesting thing is going to be with Overwatch and Rocket League. What do they do when the next generation of consoles come? That That's going to be the biggest. Like, yeah, do you just port this and then just keep on trucking with this? Or yeah, you... because the thing is, yeah. Do you but, make I mean, a new but, thing? Like, do you have to buy that? Do you have to buy the port of the, you know? Yeah, do yeah, you have to buy a port or, yeah. Or do you make a kind of a new thing, which doesn't make sense for any of these games. Because we talked about Overwatch that people will be upset if they, like, take characters away. Uh, and, 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 and especially since well, and their progression and something i just thought of um what would suck is peace you know pc players could get the short end of the stick depending how they do it because that's not a new console yeah and, and then they just <laughs> and then they got to change because consoles are changing yeah. they're have to do with that which i'm sure this has happened before or, or it'll be a thing of console players have to start over depending how they do it yeah but pc players never have to that's the hurdle that is hard for me to understand. Like, yep. every, anything else would just be self-inflicted if they try, decide to jump before. That's the, that's the hurdle that's going to be interesting to see for, Rock, like, Rocket League and Overwatch, yeah. how they handle that. I agree. Yeah. I agree. From a marketing standpoint, they want to handle it well. From a money standpoint, it, I don't know if for these things it'd be better if they did make a new game or not. Because then you just got a bunch of pissed off people. Yeah, it's weird. Like, it would... It's like a... I don't know, it would be unprecedented to be like, yep, you can just like carry straight over into the new console and just keep going with this game and not have to buy it again. I don't know how that would work, but that's that would be an unprecedented cool move, but I don't know how you try There, there, there are multiple games that can have this, but there are three games out right now that are big that we have to watch for with that. Overwatch, Rocket League, and Fortnite. How they handle, yep. how those three yep. all handle it will be interesting yep, to watch interesting. and will probably set a precedence. Well, it's like in all those, like, 
it's weird because like games as a service in general has become kind of a dirty word but like i feel like with certain games it's that's the preferred way that's the way that it should be and that's the most consumer friendly way and in other ways games that shouldn't be that way are forced into it to get money from people Mm -hmm. It's just, it's, I mean, a, it's a case by case. It, it's not a one size fits all yeah. thing. I think it's safe to say in general, me and you are okay with the way Overwatch, Rocket League, and Fortnite all do their yeah, stuff. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. If it's not affecting gameplay and it's keeping the game alive and I've had to pay a lot less money. I mean, you think about Rocket League, but a lot of people got it for free. On I got it for free. <laughs> I paid. I haven't played it nearly as much as a lot of people. I paid but... like 15 or $20 or something for it. Yeah. And I, I got way more than that <laughs> amount uh, of money yeah. out of this. <laughs> And it's crazy thing how Rocket League all these deals they get with the like the skins like uh, going to Tinder skin. I think I just saw something about Jurassic Park's Jurassic World they, skin. And I I would love to see like how exactly they did that because like I feel like that game I, like correct me if you can think of any other example, but I feel like that game definitively has the best like partnerships and like it has the most different pla- like properties represented in its game than anything else i like, can't think of it they it, have it some skin for it, like anything you can say of. and it makes sense because they're just cars <laughs> it, yeah because it's just like it's kind of a blank canvas that you can yeah. just paint on and it's it's great it's yeah. awesome yeah it's good for Doing good stuff psionics <laughs> yep. Yep, yep, um yep. now derby let's see we got like yeah for the next couple things we're gonna be talking about movie and tvs <gasps> stuff jeff this is gaming podcast but they're game related game adjacent podcast <laughs> yep okay this next thing comes from Batrana uh radulovic from polygon the latest title in the halo series isn't for the xbox instead <laughs> the long-running military sci-fi video game franchise is getting a live action television show on showtime hasn't this already been announced like five times before i think so i think I don't know. <laughs> or these type of things yeah the show will run for a 10 episode season and kyle killen who did awake um will serve as executive producer writer and showrunner i know nothing about this guy so i don't know if that's good or not um a live action halo television series for showtime was first announced back in 2013 with yeah. steven spielberg at the helm they have been periodic updates since then but this announcement is official confirmation of the series moving forward in production and that's why it's important darby Okay. Each episode will be an hour long, and production is set for early 2019. According to Showtime, the series will take place in the universe that first came to be in 2001, um, dramatizing an epic 26th century conflict between humanity and an alien threat known as the Covenant. Halo is our, um, let's see, yeah. Quote, Halo is our most ambitious series ever, and we expect audiences who have been anticipating it for years to be fairly rewarded, said Showtime President CEO. Um, David Nevins, this version of Halo will enthrall fans of the game while also drawing the uninitiated into a world of complex characters that populate this unique universe. Um, and quote, head of ha- Halo Transmedia on 340 Industries, Kiki Wolfkill, that last name's awesome. That is a pretty amazing okay. name. <laughs> said that the television series will represent new and exciting ways for fans to enter and engage with the Halo universe. Okay. I think there is a near 100% chance that this will be bad. Probably. And if it was released at any other time in history, I would say there is a 100% chance that this is bad. But there is a small chance that now I feel like TV has had such a resurgence and people kind of like, we don't get these like crappy movie tie in games or crappy just ham fisted things like from games as we'll, much. We'll get anymore. to those later. Like, we don't get those as much anymore. We still get them. The Assassin's Creed movie was apparently pretty bad, the Tomb Raider movie looked very bad to me. I burnt, it, the best I heard it's okay it's fun yeah, action it's flick. A, yeah, fun action flick. but so but that's happening less and less so there's a chance if they had come out and said this is HBO I'd be like okay maybe mm-hmm. Showtime maybe, not, not maybe I don't know so there's a chance one of those premium things there's a chance yeah I would not bank on it though I would not bank I would go into this with low expectations I will say this as someone who hasn't played Halo but based on what I know Depending how they did it. I feel like out of most game franchises, Halo has the probably a better chance than most to actually become an interesting series, live action series. I would agree. Because it's already kind of cinematic and there's a lot of lore to play with. Like, there's a yeah. lot of established and lore to play around. And it's like a space army thing, which a lot of people, even non-game, like it's something non-gamers can relate to. Well, that's the biggest thing. You need to make this with the intention of just TV watchers watching yeah. it, not game audience. I mean, like, game audience is too, but you need to make this it, so uh, that it becomes I, the I talk of I can't see everyone. much in the world other than those fans you can't please no matter what that if you make it just 
in the pr- think of thinking let's make a good TV show based on this stuff. Yeah, that the ge- people who play the games won't be pleased. Right. Like I can't unless the, the really hard is like it's not it's not exactly the lore. Well, I mean that could add, well I mean I could absolutely see it being a, a bad yeah. version of Halo that Halo fans are like all right no, because I mean I love Tomb Raider but that movie I was like eh. It's the, it's the no, no, no. I me. mean, if it's good, like if it's made with a TV yeah. thing in mind, it's actually good. I can't, yeah. I can't imagine Halo fans think, being like. And this might, I mean, this might not be where other people um, come from. And I mean, I would wait to see a trailer or something. But I would think the way to go would be to not just tell Halo's story. My, the way I would think is tell a story in the Halo universe, but maybe mm-hmm. not even with Master Chief. Just kind of like do your own thing there, or tell, or fill in the gap somewhere so it's new to everyone. Mm-hmm. That's where my mind immediately goes because if it's just like following Halo beat for beat, it yeah. might be I I don't know, but like who knows? Correct it's, me it's weird, if are they Halo books? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I mean I read them, but yes. Yeah. There. there are a lot of stuff to go at. So Yep. Oh no, the lore for Halo goes insanely deep. Like yeah. you could go in so many. So things. yes, this has a great chance of being bad. But as like I said, as far as video game things and making a live action thing out of it, this has one of the better chances of success in my I opinion. Agree. I would agree. Still yeah. not a great one, though. Yeah. But you want to... Do you want to talk about something that is apparently a good adaptation of a video game? Oh, I mean, I can tell you this. You still haven't gotten around to it, because... Now, now I have a, you know, date to do it by. Yeah. Um, this comes from Ride by NF from IGN. The Castlevania animated series is returning to Netflix this October. Castlevania's second season launches October 26th, spanning eight episodes. The announcement was made at Anime Expo during the Netflix Hearts anime panel. Stoked, Jeff. I'm stoked. I'm 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 pretty I'm pretty excited. Yeah. That, Obviously, once you get to the end of the season, there's a tra- trailer for Simon Belmont and Smash. <laughs> oh, that would be amazing, <laughs> and it would get leaked immediately. Well, yeah. But um, like those for it was only like four episodes in the first season, so it was be- it wasn't even really a season. It was kind of a primer for the show, you know, introduction yeah. to the show. But more of a little. T- wasn't it just kind of like a test? Like, okay, let's put this out, see how it goes. That's kind of what it felt like to yeah. me. But, I mean, it still had an arc, and it, yeah. it didn't just end abruptly. It sounds it more like, like a, it was just an animated movie st- split into, like, four episodes. Basically. That's basically what it was. But, like, I was so shocked by how much I think I really liked it, because I'm not the biggest Castlevania guy. Not, I think it's bad. I just haven't really played any of them. Yeah. But, like, the animation was beautiful, and it was surprisingly, like, really funny. There was a lot of, like, jokes that I felt like should have went fell flat but the characters were just so like kind of endearing that Mm -hmm. you just liked it and it was dark it like it it went on so many different levels it just hit on on everywhere it just seemed like the people doing it know what they're doing Mm -hmm. and i'm so down like i'll probably rewatch it before season one too yeah it's four episodes why not (laughs) we can just watch it together at some point i want to see if it if it's as good as i remember Mm -hmm. i I know it wasn't that long ago but i just want to see if it completely holds up i think you would like it a lot oh yeah I mean, the Incredible. animation is stunning. Yeah, yeah. Stunning animation. So Speaking of yeah. Netflix anime, people sure, I've started a little bit. People should sure watch Agretzko. That's mm. good shit. Okay. It's about a little, I guess, fox thing. It's animated it's, or whatever. It's an anime. She's an office worker. She hates her job. So she um, makes herself feel better by going to karaoke and As doing heavy do. metal. As you do. Yes. It's pretty great. That's pre- that sounds I, pretty great. You would like it, Darby. Alex and Olivia love it. Okay. Um, now, Darby, we're going to talk about a video game adaptation that's going to be unquestionably <laughs> bad. <laughs> I wish you hadn't, but... <laughs> you mean it's not going to win the Oscar, Jeff? But it could... Uh, Oscar watch. <laughs> it could be so bad as entertaining. Yeah. yeah. Okay, this comes from Mike Fleming Jr. from Deadline. So, you know, something we don't really talk about or get much used Yeah, we don't get... Deadline's not a common source in there, is it large? Here's an intriguing combination. Jim Carrey and Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> Can I leave? Wait, <laughs> is there space for me to leave? Sources said Carrie's negotiating to start in the Paramount film in the role of Robotnik, um, a villain in the live action slash CGI adaptation of the hit Sega video game. Pick stars James Marston and Tika Sumter and is directed by Jeff Fowler, Neil Moritz, Mia Nishi, and Tim Miller are producers. Pat Casey and Josh Miller wrote the script. Sonic must stop Eggman from completing his plan for world domination is basically the gist of this one. Maybe like, they know what they're doing, Jeff. Maybe, maybe they're just making a meme movie. Like, um, Darby, I, um, I just want to add something that made people like grown to this even more. Eggman's going to be live action. It's going to be actually be Jim Carrey dressed up as Eggman. 
they know what they're doing. They have to know that they have to know what they're doing, right? I can't remember what Jay Mars is. I think he's kind of playing like a cop who becomes a friend with Sonic. Have we seen any of this? No. Darby, I feel like I I gotta watch this no matter what. No, we do. We like, do. Watch a long stream with nerds at large. It's happening. Damn Darby, it. we're, we're going to the theaters and watching this. What are you talking about? <laughs> we're gonna take the rec- recording equipment into the theater. And we're get, gonna and get kicked out. No, don't have to watch it. <laughs> we're gonna do a little review of this and just have a good time. I'm just gonna stare at the camera for the full like for the full hour while Jeff just talks about his favorite Jim Carrey scenes, <laughs> <laughs> and Alex just. Does whatever Alex does. <laughs> I just assume Alex is going to watch this with us. I just assume that... Or this could be the greatest movie of all time. <laughs> this could be the most unintentionally great movie of all time. Oscar watch. Yep. <laughs> keep, keep it locked. Jim Carrey's going to bring it home. Also, I find it interesting that they're going with Robotnik as the name and not Eggman. Yeah. I like it. OG. Yeah. yeah. Throw it back. I really want to see Jim Carrey as in a Robotnik suit now. I just like I I, I all right we all right all right all right. All right. I think we know we know a hundred percent that this movie is gonna be bad. It's just what type of bad. And the, the, I, there's like, like one in a trillion chance that it's good. No, there's not. No, there's I, not. I gave it too much credit there. Yes, you okay. gave it too much credit. <laughs> there's a chance of it being good bad where we can laugh at it and have fun. Yeah. And then there's just, we wasted an hour and a half of our life bad. It's just, which one of those is it going to I'm really hoping for so bad it's good. That's what I, that's where I'm going. That's where I'm hoping. I want it so bad. That's, that's all I want. Darn. But you know what's probably going to happen? You and Alex are going to think it's so bad that it's good, and I'll just sit there and die in my seat. True. We sat for a kink game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, guys, you guys don't value your time as much as I do. Yeah. All right. I'm more right. excited for this than the Mario movie. Just checking. I'm not excited for that either. Is that still happening? I think so. We just haven't heard about it's it. It's by the Minions people, Jeff. Yeah, but at least, at least unlike Sonic, it has no live action involved. That is a lot better, but still. Mario doesn't have a story. <laughs> yeah. It's not like... Yeah. Just give me my Kid Icarus anime, Nintendo. Just stop trying to make video game movies happen. And let's, just stop. I'd rather you stop. Just stop it. Just make animated series for the games that make sense, like Castlevania and Kid Icarus. Yep. Okay. Um, next thing. Shibana. This comes from Shibana Ari from IGN. Overwatch's 28th hero, the tank character Wrecking Ball, is now live on the PTR. Wrecking Ball. Here are Wrecking Ball's abilities, according to Blizzard. They got some quad cannons, you know, just machine guns. Adaptive shield grants Wrecking Ball a number of temporary shields based on the number of enemies nearby. Roll Wrecking Ball transform into a spear with increased speed, Darby. I mean, wait, you have not even told the people what this is. What if they what if they have no clue what this character is? It's a hamster. It's a murder death hamster piloting a giant mech that's like a hamster ball. It is the best thing that's happened to Overwatch. You heard yep. me, it's the best. Yeah, I get the rest of it, sorry. Grappling claw. While in roll mode, wrecking ball can launch a short grappling hook to attach the services, swing around, clear gaps, and move upwards. Using this ability allows Wrecking Ball to gain momentum, dealing damage, knocking back enemies un- upon impact. It becomes a literally r- little Wrecking Ball. Yes. It's great. Pile Driver, Wrecking Ball slams down from the air, pulling enemies towards the center of the impact and dealing damage. Minefield, his ultimate Wrecking Ball litters the ground around him with damage dealing proximity mines. Um, now, besides the fact that it's a hamster and that made people butt hurt and it makes me so happy, like, just God, I cannot express oh. how, mu- how happy it makes me that people were upset about the hamster and I'm like, hell yes, bring me on the murder hamster. Uh, I, know, I just love it how people were like, this is going too far. It's like, <laughs> you literally like, what is Junkrat? Apparently he's supposed to be a man, but he does not look like a man whatsoever. There's a talking gorilla. There's a talking gorilla. I mean, like. The first thing you see when you start off the game is a talking gorilla. <laughs> I was literally the start of every single game. Yes, no. The- thematically wise, just whatever. Get and over it. I like it how but, out of our friend group, the only people who were kind of hesitant about this. Are the ones that care. The, the, most the one who are really into Overwatch. No. And us who are more casual about it. Like, 
Hey, hell I think yeah. that's what I've seen with a lot of people. It's like I just play Overwatch every like mo- like once a month or something like that. I just casually don't really pay that much attention. So I'm like, hell yeah, bring on the goofiness. I'm, I'm bring so- on the hamster wrecking ball. Bring on the murder. Hamster. I think it's my new main. And yeah, it's people who are like watching all the oh, who's the character gonna be? Looking at all the information, and everything. Like yeah, they were disappointed. I don't. So some people were disappointed because it wasn't a chimp like that. So I'm like, that sounds more boring because we already got gorilla. Murder hamster. You can't know Jeff. This is the best. You cannot yes. get better than this. I agree. That aside, it actually does look awesome. Like yeah. the moves look really, really good. It looks like a really cool like mobile tank mm-hmm. because you can go into this hamster ball thing. You can go so fast. They like, go throughout the Hammond racing, man. Yeah. You can still get hurt when you're in the hamster ball, which you should be able to. They should have but, a little event where you literally just do Hammond racing. Oh, it's coming. I think yeah. it has to be coming. And people have done it. It has to be, it has to yeah. be coming. Like they just make a tra- like a track purpose for that. Yeah. Like, but, but just the, it, it adds so much unpredictability where you, if people are going to get really good at, using the grappling hook and swinging around like they're gonna know which corners to swing yeah. around and you can use the momentum to carry you so people are gonna be on the point you think you're good and then this ham and just comes swinging around there and like starts just like yep. making a shield <laughs> around the point basically no it's gonna be sick it's gonna be really 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 cool and i am super excited about it it's probably gonna be op at first like every new overwatch character yeah. is and then it'll get nerfed down but it'll be fine He'll be fine. No, it, it legitimately looks like a lot. Of, he lo- he looks like a lot of fun to play mm-hmm. as. I think he's going to be your... He screams <laughs> Jeff. Yep. <laughs> screams <laughs> Jeff just so much. On, yeah. every, on every level. Final news story. Just a quick little sales time thing. Hollow Knight has surpassed 1 million sales on PC. And Teen Cherry also confirmed that the game has sold 250,000 the first two weeks on the Switch. So 1.25 million copies of Hollow Knight have been sold, at least. It's awesome. Game was made by like two people. So they're rolling in the dough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so like the more I hear people, like a lot, a lot more people are talking about Hollow Knight now yeah. than they have been in the past because of the Switch. And the more I hear about it, the more I'm excited to get more into it. Mm-hmm. I'm just so pumped. Yep. All right, Jeffrey, it's time for the main topic. Or you always forget. Oh, I always forget. It's not time for the main topic. It's time for Darby to lose a game, probably. Yep. Okay, Darby. This is one of those that I'm just kind of trying out. Um, that's probably better for when if there were two people here. That's that's what makes these making these games up so difficult. I'm sorry, I am but one. Yeah. Okay, Darby. So our main topic is like you said earlier, we're going to go down the games list or whatever yes. this year, talking about them. But Darby, we are Jeff. Darby. Those games had to be announced at some point. Some of those we've been waiting a long time for. Mm-hmm. Some of them longer than others. <laughs> this is true. So what I got here, true. I got seven questions or whatever. I'm going to give you two games. Okay. I want you to tell me which one was announced first. Gotcha. Not not necessarily um like reveal trailer. Just we finding out it exists. Okay. This will be interesting. Yes. I feel like there's definitely going to be something that comes in my mind. You'll be like, actually, it was two years before and this guy said in the interview. That... Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. And I didn't do anything tricky like something announced in the same month or some shit. Okay. I didn't even look exact days. I just did it by months and years. Okay. Yeah. All right. I really don't know how I'm going to do in this. I don't know what to expect. So let's... First one. Final Fantasy VII Remake. Okay, or well, at least I know that one. Rehappy Few. Oh, that one's weird because I don't know that much about. Huh. What I tried to do is at least give yeah. you some idea, at least one of them. I want to lean towards We Happy Few, but that's definitely a lot more of a question mark to me. Like I know when Final Fantasy Seven Remake was obvi- obviously, mm-hmm. I but I, mean, I just feel like We Happy Few's been around in some capacity for a long time, so I'm gonna go with that. What's your one? We happy few. We happy few is first. Correct. Yes. We happy few was announced in February 2015. So not that not that long before. Yeah. Final Fantasy VII remake the June. June. Yeah. 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 Not not too long before. Go on. Okay. Number two. Dragon Quest XI or Red Dead Redemption Two. Dragon Quest XI because uh, it was the NX thing. Right? Correct. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. First game technically announced for the NX. Yep. Way right before. Yep. Okay. Kingdom Hearts 3 or Dreams? 
I, I feel like it has to be Kingdom Hearts 3, but I feel like this might be a trick question. I mean, Kingdom Hearts 3. Wrong. It's, it's Dreams. Damn. When was Dreams? Dreams was technically announced at the PlayStation 4 reveal thing, PlayStation meeting, mm. that February. And Kingdom Hearts was revealed that easily. Damn. I mean, I should have known that was a trick question because it's, uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 is so obvious. Let's see. Cyberpunk 2077 or Crackdown 3? Oh, wow. I know Cyberpunk was talked about, like... So, I mean, like, does them just talking about the game existing, that counts, right? Like, so... Was... Them saying straight up this exists. Hmm. I really don't know. This is kind of 50-50. I could see either way. I'm going to say Cyberpunk, but I could easily see me being wrong. You're right. Hey. What were those? Cyberpunk was announced in May 2012. Okay. <laughs> Crackdown 3, easily of 2014. No, okay. Okay. Yeah. One more and you win, Darby. Hey. Yeah, definitely one of those that would be better if we had like Willow someone to do. No, but it's like, good. more entertaining. I like that idea though. Um yeah, that's one of those things tested out so I could bring this back. <laughs> yes. Okay. Willow doesn't watch anyway. Exactly. No, no like I'm gonna use the same game, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> um Code Vein or okay. Left Alive. Uh No these games don't particularly follow, yeah. but they're I guess kind of spoiler. They both went since we started Nerds at Large. Yeah. I think Code Vein was first. Was Code Vein first? Correct. Hey. Code Vein was announced in April, like right after yeah. we really got started. Yeah, that's Left Alive was announced at Paris Game, Games Week. Or, yeah, or right. TGS, sorry. All right, okay, yeah. yeah. TGS. I, I knew it was something like... I knew that Code Vein was in the summer, spring, summer issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. So you win, but we got two more. All right. We got Mutant Year Zero, Road to Eden... Or Concrete Genie. Wait, which one is Mutant Year Zero? That's the XCOM looking one. Uh, right, right, right. Um, and then Concrete Genie. Concrete Genie was sometime in the fall. Was was that? That wasn't P. That might have been. Not PSX. gonna tell you. You're gonna have to remember. I know. I'm just mentally going through this. It might have been PSX. I think. I don't know about this, but I think Mutant Year Zero was first. Wrong. Mm, when was when was Mutant Year Zero? February. Really? Yeah. That's weird. That's what I saw when I looked it up. Hmm. I was confused too. Maybe we didn't know about it until later because I felt like it was a lot late. I don't know. That's weird. Concrete Genie was October. Weird. So. Last one. Team Sonic Racing. Resident Evil 2 Remake. What? Uh, uh, so we're talking about like when it was announced before <laughs> Resident Evil 2 Remake, I'm guessing. Uh, ba 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 bum bum Sonic Team Racing was like rumored for so long I have no clue when they confirmed it. Resident Evil 2 remake. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was one of those where it's like, let's make sure he paid his into that rule. <laughs> <laughs> Cause Resident Evil 2 remake, August 2015. Mm. Team Sonic Racing, two months ago. Okay. In yeah. May. <laughs> okay, yeah. I knew, I knew that it was taught about forever. Yeah, but five out of seven, Darby. Woo! Did good. Heck yeah. Alright. Now it's time for the main topic. So Jeff, what are we doing? Okay, what we're going to do, we got the list of games. Don't worry, not everything on here is everything we're going to go over. I just... Three pages, strap in! <laughs> Actually, I have no idea why I have this page. Get out of here, page. Yeah. Um, we're just going to go through every game that is confirmed for this year that I have on this list. Obviously, I'm missing some. And some games that are just really, really tiny. Yes. <laughs> Um, if you're super mad about a game we missed, please tell us. I'm very yeah. angry. Yeah. And let us know so we can just add it to the list. <laughs> and so we're just going to talk about about it, our excitement level, whether we're going to buy it, what and we're thinking. And how we think we're going to do all yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah, have a nice chat, man. Nice chat, man. Yeah. Yeah. We'll start with next week with Octopath Traveler. Oh, it's going to be terrible, Jeff. Who wants this game? Yeah. A little nerd, nerd game where a bunch of nerdy boys go out and... I'll add if we're buying it on the computer thing later i mean 100 percent buying yeah. it 100 percent buying it i think this game is going to be phenomenal yeah i think uh, i think that is well documented how how good we think this is and how excited we are for it i think the interesting thing is i've seen square it seems like square and nintendo are both pushing this game a lot more than I. yeah thought they i were. mean it's 
the only game that's coming out in July for the most part. The big one. Yeah, I mean, I think there's so many things going in its favor. The fact that it's coming out in a month, a month and a whole kind of few month period like leading up to it too, where there wasn't too terribly much. So this is kind of like, this feels like the, for a lot of people, I think this is like the next big like roadmap mm-hmm. item, like in the release map. Also like, just thinking about it, I'm probably forgetting something, but as far as like brand new games that are not ports for the switch, yeah. this and Kirby and I guess Pokemon are like the only ones this year. Most of the other ones are multiplayer games. Uh, okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, So people are looking for a single-player game for Switch. And this one's very different than those, so it's, yeah. like, you know, different fan base. And, um, I've seen, like, YouTube ads for it all over the place, and, like, at a lot, I feel like a lot, it's shown up, what, even if it was just, like, little reminders of it, it's shown up in a lot of Nintendo Directs and stuff, to oh, be yeah. like, hey, remember about this game. So, I could see it doing, commercially, a lot better than we thought it was going to. I could see it... Not that the games are any bit similar, but something like I never would have expected Nier Automata to break out of its niche audience. I could see this being a similar thing where we're like, holy crap, Octopath has sold over a million copies like in a few months, we say that. I, I, think, Octopath, like, you know. I think Octopath has set up the best it can for it to sell with the way they marketed yeah. it and its release mm-hmm. time. Yeah, it could not ask for, ask for better. Yeah. And it's starting to, like, it has a lot of gaming presses attention now mm-hmm. the demos have definitely helped yeah and like you said it being in like every nintendo direct even if it's just a small thing yeah and as bad as this like i think it's it's a people people are like put way too much credit on just review scores alone or whatever and people like an eight what a terrible game when you know that's an eight is a very good game like people are just like that but I do feel like this is a game where, because it doesn't have, like, this name behind it or anything like that, and normally I don't feel like people would care much about this game, or talk much about this game, even if it was good. If this game comes out and has anything less than a 9, as, as sad as it is, I feel like it's going to be talked about a lot less. But if it has a 9 or above, I feel like these outlets are going to be talking about it a lot. Yeah. It's weird, like, I hate it, but I feel like that's going to be, because, like, you have to be so selective with games these days, because there's so much to play. I feel like if this comes out as a 7 or 8, it'll be like, oh, okay, I heard it was okay, but I never really got to it. But if it, you know, it needs to be that groundswell, which I could see happening. Yeah. And we might start seeing that happen by tomorrow. I don't know when the embargo is for this, but... It's not on a Sunday, don't um, sorry. Oh, sorry, today's yeah, yeah. Saturday. I was thinking today was Sunday. Um, Monday, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I imagine it's gotta be soon. No. So... Let's hope. Getting that. We, that we'll one definitely up. be talking about it. Heck yeah, we will. Um, next, coming out the same day, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. Yes. Um, so this is just, the, for anyone who doesn't know, this is, it's a port of the first one, right? It's not a new. Yeah. It's not a new. It has a couple of Super Mario Odyssey inspired stages, yeah, like New cool. Donk City and stuff. Just cool. Yeah. It's cool. But a lot of people didn't play this game. It was stuck yep. on the Wii Again, it's one of the things like the other ports, like, yeah, not many people played it. And everyone who did plays it, play, everyone who did play it says it's really good, including Jeff Mayo. So good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm not getting him because, like I said, I got, already had it, and a few stages with everything that's going on is not worth getting it. If there wasn't so many other games to play. Yeah. If I hear there are more stages than I think, and everything, and is a sale down the line, I'll pick it up. Yeah. But I think this is mostly for people who didn't get to play. Oh, yeah. yeah. These are what most of these parts are for. Yeah. Yeah. Which that also seems like another really great Switch game. Yep. To have this, like, puzzle thing that you have just on the go. Yep. Yep. It'll be a great one. And it's just one of those things. Keep on releasing these Switch ports so I can just have a Viking funeral for my Wii U. Yep. I don't think I'll be getting it because it's not my type of game, but I'm very happy for the people. Who yep. will get the only other game we have for July that makes me think we're missing something is Banner Saga 3. Which I didn't know was coming out so soon. Which, I mean, conceptually, I love Banner Saga, but I should probably pay one and two before Which... I play three. <laughs> Did you get it from Twitch? No. Ah, oh, dang it. I'm stupid. I got I got one and two from Twitch, so. That's good. Should have done that. Should have done that. But, no, those games look awesome. Oh, yeah. Fire Emblem, but, like, very kind of more gritty and, like, mm-hmm. different art style and stuff. I love it. It's awesome. And I think I heard something about it, stuff, like, carrying over. That that's interesting like decisions or something? i feel like i heard people say that or something uh, at some point. or it might be in the direct so if so more reason to definitely wait to play one and two <laughs> yes yeah i'm glad to see those are doing well enough for them to get the three though yeah <laughs> i expect this game to do good for what it is 
it being i think it's gonna be on switch right away so that would definitely help it and especially during the july time i feel like all the banner sagas at least just from tangentially i feel like they've kind of been slow burns like they've just like gotten more and more especially when they go on sale and do stuff like that so yeah. like, even if it doesn't sell amazingly right off the bat i wouldn't count it out you know Mm-hmm. And, and it doesn't need I feel to like sell I, that much. Especially since 1 and 2 have been on the Switch for a little bit. It's kind of gotten more in the public eye. Especially for Switch owners. And yeah. yeah. And I probably it being free on Twitch. 1 and 2 being free on Twitch helps. Yes. So. Yeah. Let's hope it be good things. Okay, we're getting to August now. Next game. WarriorWare Gold. I forgot this game existed. I kind of did too. Um, So, it comes out August 3rd. And we're not getting it because... You don't care about Warrior Wear. I mean, I don't think we care about playing Warrior Wear games single player anyway. We had fun with that one game I had yeah. for the Wii U. Like, I like the idea of Warrior Wear games, just the acid trip craziness, but I'm, I'm not getting it. Plus on the 3DS. Wasn't and, there something weird about this one? I kind of... It's like a greatest hit thing. Yeah, okay, that's it. Yeah. 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 Which is fine. Um, And I don't even know where my 3DS is, so... <laughs> <laughs> Collecting dust somewhere. Yeah, I'm okay to move on. From um, so, I expect it to do... I don't know. <laughs> not well. I mean, if I'm being honest, probably not. I mean, maybe the Switch bump. May, like, may... It has the Switch bump, but I don't expect it to What's be. What Switch bump? Just that a lot of these, like... A lot of games like this do better than I think they're going to do. No, no, no. It's on only Switch. on the 3DS, though. Oh, never mind. Uh, never mind. Then they might... I, I don't know. I don't know how to gauge 3DS games. Exactly. I don't have the gauge to. I expect games. it to maybe do with Nintendo's expectations, whatever those are. Maybe. Sorry, that's another reason why I'm not interested. In it. Oh, well, I would have been, <laughs> I would have been slightly curious if it was on the Switch. <laughs> it's like I'm not... it's, it's one of those games where like, why isn't this on the Switch too? You have to give me a very, very good reason to yeah. bust out my 3DS. It like Metroid, which I really want to play at some point. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Going on, Overcooked Two. Heck yes, Overcooked Two. Yep. Oh yeah, just for the curious that we know going on, um, as far as like putting our name, saying like what we're gonna potentially buy. Are you doing that? Yeah, I'm doing that. Right? Okay, cool. Because I have not. The only that. one we've ever done is really Octopath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless you want to put down for a banner stock of way in the future. No, no, no. Yeah. The way I'm doing it is, if there's a chance I could see me buying it by the end of this year, I'm just gonna put it. Okay. For, well, for whatever reason. I don't see that with Warrior Wear. Oh, no, no. I'm just saying. Overcooked sure. 2, absolutely. Yeah. I'll put that down. Uh, like Overcooked 2. I think one of us should buy it so that we can... We can oh, yeah. Most definitely. Because On the Switch. Let's we, go. We were at least close to beating Overcooked, the first Overcooked. So we could finish that at some point and go into Overcooked 2. Yeah, then we, yeah we need 2 because 2 looks crazy. It looks apparently. awesome. It so looks it, really cool. It, it does look like it's going to... It's Overcooked, but it looks like it is a sequel version of it where there's more crazy It's, stuff it's going definitely on. more Overcooked. Building on. But... It, like it's what you would want you don't yeah. want them to do too like go too much but like i i feel like they added enough in there that you would expect from a sequel there's like more mechanics like some of the like environmental stuff is like crazier and everything but it's not too crazy and that's why they were able to probably make this in such a short amount of time yeah. which just gives me more overcooked faster so that's yeah and i think it's good <laughs> building on the momentum because you know people have been talking about overcooked for a fair amount the last couple of years i think it's smart to get that out as soon as you yep. can and I expect it to sell well. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for for what it is, it's on. And they went on Switch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's on everything. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's gonna be, it's gonna be nothing yeah. less than great. Yeah. And I say it August seventh, and that next week, we have We Happy Few. This is this very is an interesting, interesting one. Yes, this is a very interesting one. Um, as far as I'm gonna put down me for interested in this game. Okay. Because this is one I can see. It's definitely a wait for reviews and stuff. That yes, that's the game I could see potentially, yeah. depending on what I get going on, if it reviews well and it is what I wanted, which by the sounds of it, it they took the feedback to the op- um to the beta. Yeah, yeah, the beta and beta. stuff to heart yeah. and they did make those changes. Mm. But at the same time, they're kind of rushing, maybe do those sh- rushing or whatever. And I mean, this is a game that has shown poorly in the past, so we need to yes. like wait and see. But I want to see that, and pro- what also sucks is it did go up to full price at some point. I wish I just Makes bit the part of me wishes I just bit the bullet and just got to pre-ordered it on an Xbox. Yeah, by the chance. You, there was no way for you to know that they were going to get bought by Xbox and all this other stuff. Oh no, I was talking about before because I know, it, it I know, was I thirty bucks. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh yeah, that happened before they got bought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But 
I yeah, I'm very kind of curious on that too. But it also, if it does turn out to be pretty good, comes out at a good time for you and anyone else. It's before the crazy September <laughs> onslaught. This is uh, a game that, as far as how good it does, it's. This is a game. It has to have good reviews. It has, it has to be that will make it or break. It has to be the Bioshock like game that people want. It got to have that interesting story and hook. Which, also, something interesting. Story and setting are amazing. Like they're yes. awesome. I'm so yes. interested. In it. So, so in. I mean, the they people... nail that. I'll pr- I'll get it at some point. Yeah. It just depends like when. But I think I read in an interview recently that they're still going to have a survival mode in it. Okay. So when they change the game to, you can still do that. Because some people did want to kind of enjoy that and everything. It and I think I heard it wasn't necessarily bad. It was just wasn't what people wanted, and people were just kind of disappointed mm. and everything. So you can still do that stuff. Okay. And I think I heard something a interview like just like yesterday. The saw an article saying something that one of the developers said it's like a twenty hour game. Mm. So it's not like a crazy long single player thing, which. I'm uh, I'm open to more of those. Right. Yeah. So, we'll have to see. Well, we will, uh, that's definitely one I have my eye on. Yep. So, next game. Same day, August 10th. Madden NFL 19. You're so awful. It's gonna... Why I, do they keep on making these things? Uh, wh- you know, ha- why is Madden want to go up against We Happy Few? I mean, yeah. It's really, it's really dangerous, man. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I think we can agree for the sake of time. Gonna sell great. We don't care. Yep. <laughs> T.O.'s on the cover. Oh, yeah. At least I want to think. Super yep. weird. Okay, August 14th. The Walking Dead, the final season, episode one starts. I have literally nothing to say. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't played any of them. I, I mean, I don't know. Have you played? I ha- Have I you think, been I keeping I, up with any of them? I think I played the first episode of one at some point. Uh, I think I have one. I, and maybe even two, but from like PS Plus and stuff. I think they did. They did say this was gonna be the last Telltale game on the old engine. Though I think I might they be wrong, but that. I'm pretty sure they said that. Yeah, I thought that was a story, but it's like, eh. which is interesting. It's is, yeah. it interesting to um. Gotta add a game. I forgot. Forgot Life is Strange. Just... Ricky Ford has been out. <laughs> you learn? Yeah, I don't know. Well, like, cool for everyone who's been following. I expect this to do better than the last couple, because it's the last hurrah. It's and Walking like, Dead is. Definitely been their most successful one or one of. Uh, I would say, yeah. I mean, it's their staple. It's the yeah. one that got them into relevance, if anything. Yeah, else. even people who are kind of been out of it, like, okay, this is the final season. This is definitive. Let's, They'll get, let's pr- go. They'll probably bring yeah. a lot more people back in. Yep. And I might get to it at some point whenever I finally play this game. I mean, this is a giant hole in my gaming history. Yeah. Is, you know. Okay, next thing. August 21st, Shinmu 1 and 2 Remaster. Huber! Yep. <laughs> I, I think it's just that me and you don't really have that much interest in this thing. I, it just it just screams game that did not age well. Yeah, but like this is g- amazing for a lot of people who were into it and everything. But you have to have yeah them. get yeah get in on an update of things. But if you I, don't have the nostalgia for this, this game's not for you. I mean, it's yeah. gonna be the same thing. It's but like, at least it's two games for thirty bucks. Yeah, no, no, it's awesome. I mean, there's yeah. nothing bad about. I mean, those those even everyone, if people yeah. are like, okay, I'm gonna get this shot because people are gonna get this shot because. Like, people like Huber. Let's, <laughs> let's be honest. The hype is infectious. Yeah, so it isn't the biggest um, investment. Yeah, not the biggest cost on you and yeah. everything. But uh, we all have those games. I expect we're nostalgic for it, but we would never... Uh, this is going to be a generic answer. I'm gonna I said to do fine for what it is. Yeah. I mean, I don't know I mean, exactly I can't, I can't it, expect them... I don't think Sega expects it or whoever to sell millions <laughs> or anything. Oh, I, I would at least hope they wouldn't. Yeah. Or three, you know. Yeah. But I think this this just screens one of those things like, okay, this is just for the fans. Yep. Yeah. It's like a passion thing. Yeah. For the, yeah. So um next thing. Kind of similar, August twenty eighth, your your Kuza Kiwami too, as far as setting and stuff goes. Yes. Um I ex- we're not getting this. We're interested in the, in, in the Yakuza games. Yeah, it's just I'm going to start somewhere else. You know, I'm not going like, to... I would imagine me and you would just start with zero. Zero, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to jump in with Kwame 2. Yeah. But this is cool. Is this... Has this already been out in Japan? I think so. Okay. But I don't think for crazy long. Makes sense to me. And the I sheer expect... sheer amount of Yakuza that everyone's gotten in the last, like, two years. Yeah. I expect this... Normally, I would say this would do well because... The Yakuza games, Yakuza, have 
say it have been doing increasingly well here. Yeah. But is it is getting it's like in the middle of that point where everything's starting to come out, so people might be hesitant to get it. And like I I feel a lot of people are not caught up yet. That too. <laughs> They've been releasing them. It's yeah, it's like... easier to get people to get into Kiwami and Zero. I wonder how much money you have to spend to like play through all the Yakuza games at this point. It's a lot of games. Yeah. But maybe I'll get to it at some point, Jacob. I'm work- we'll work on it. Yep. I have Kiwami. <laughs> I got it cheap. It's like, might as well go ahead and get this. Yeah, I'm interested. Actually, actually wait, no, I got it for Christmas present. Never mind. <laughs> hmm. My mom was like, this is like, this, this is like a game you'd like. It's like, you're not wrong. <laughs> wait, which one do you have? I'm sorry. I have Kiwami. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I probably have to get zero, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, like, I, Kiwami might not so, be that bad of an entry point either. Cause true. It's, well, if you ever want to play Kiwami, still, I got a physical copy of it. Because it's still, I mean, it's a remake of one, right? Yeah. 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 So, I mean, that. Yeah. ask Jacob. I would consult with Jacob, the resident nerds at large, uh, Yakuza expert. Yeah, I'll ask him if it's an okay entry point, so that way I don't have to spend more money to try it out. Yes. Seriously. Yeah, yeah. That, that that would be a good plan. That would probably be Also, right. same thing with Fusing, because you can just borrow my yeah, copy. Yeah. Yes. Okay, And next. then they'll come out and say, that, no, that's the worst yeah. place to start. So, we're getting at this is a game we might get long into the future. If long like into the series. future, yeah. yeah. Yakuza, definitely interested in it. And if you like kind of wacky Japanese adventures, check out Yakuza, yep. for sure. Okay, game, Naruto to Boruto, Shinobi Strikers, August 31st. Um, <laughs> Bo- not, not getting it. The fact that his name is Boruto is still so funny to me. Yeah. Um... We, we like to call him Bort around here, though. Sorry. Remember that. <laughs> um, not getting it. Expected to do okay for what these anime game games. What kind of game is this? It's like a third-party fighting thing, but it's a team-based type thing. Like where so I think it's not like the other ones? That... Kind of is, I think, but I think they're like more modes involved. Like, they might be like a capture the flag thing, and instead of like a fighting game, they're like three-person teams, I think, and, and there's a different player who controls each thing. Hmm. Like a multiplayer thing. Hmm. Doesn't sound bad. I think I've heard good things about it, but I have no interest. Oh yeah, yeah. If, if you don't, I don't. <laughs> I expect this to sell well for an anime thing. That's not a straight up fighting thing. But this next game, Jeff. This next game is what into we the September. The into the September. September fourth. We had Dragon Quest Eleven. Give it to me. Get hype, Jeff. Give where, it to me. Where's that hype level at? Where's your desire index? <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. As far as this year goes, I said I'm playing Spider-Man first, but I'm more excited for Dragon Quest. Mm. I'm just playing Spider-Man because... There's spoilers going to be all over the place. Yeah. All over the place. I'm not as worried about Dragon Quest. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately. And Dragon Quest is something you're going to want to, like, nestle down with and play for a long time. I mean, I might play them both kind of simultaneously. Yeah, That's just working Dragon Quest time. over time. Yeah. Yeah. I so wish that, for you, that Dragon Quest was on Switch immediately. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But... Question, I guess, for you. Do you have any interest in playing this game ever? Probably not. Okay. Just, I mean, not anything against it. It's just there. It's a, it's a long time. It's like I oh, can no, only no. play so many of no, those. I understand. No, yeah. I'm just mainly asking because I mentioned before I might have all that money on PSN. Yeah. So I'm I wondering if, like, it. maybe I can just use that on that. I would, I would yeah, I would just go for yeah, it. Yeah, not get a physical copy. I'll get a physical copy Spider Man because you'll probably wanna. I will wanna play Spider Man. Yeah. I will, and I will be playing it probably either way. But yep. Yep, so I'm getting it. As far as sales-wise... I <laughs> really don't know what to expect. Like, what did Dragon Quest... I mean, like, Dragon Quest do not do great in the... And, I mean, I know in Japan it's, like, bigger than Mario. Or it's, like, or the same size as Mario in popularity. Like, where that's everyone why, knows that's Dragon Quest. That's why I want a Dragon Quest character in Smash. I, mean, I think it's, it's a possibility. Dragon Quest, is, is it still that popular in Japan? Like, where it sells, like, a, it's, absurd it's, amount? It sold 3 million alone in Japan. Last I heard, and that was a it, while it did, ago. Okay, yeah. Alone. <laughs> yeah, and Japan... A lot smaller than America. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but, I, like, from what I can tell, I mean, it's been a long time since we've had, like, a proper Dragon Quest that wasn't on a handheld or, yes. or, or Last online. one since 8, which, let me look where it came. And oh. That was GameCube, right? And so that was PS2. Okay. And, like, 9 was, like, online, right? And then, like... 9 online. was, I think, a DS game. And then 10 was online. One of them was online. But... Yes, 10 was online, and we never got any in ah. the Americas. Yeah, 2004 for Dragon Quest Eight. That's the last time we got uh, a c- regular console Dragon Quest. They do not so that's, put... that's why Dragon Quest fans are making this a big de- a big deal that's out of crazy. this. Well, I feel like there's more buzz around it than I thought there would be. I don't know if that's just because of how 
much of a like historic thing it is that yeah. these don't happen very often and it might still just be the same small group of dragon quest fans yeah the time it's coming out does not do you any favors it this definitely has a set for because people who are into dragon quest are getting this no matter what yeah it's not gonna try i don't think it's gonna like track all that grand mpds Ever. because of everything else but like I could see this surprise, like doing surprisingly well in the U.S. or doing better than I other could see it potentially being but... kind of a slow burn because September is crazy. We know this, and people for a lot of people, Dragon Quest can be lower on the totem pole. But if people hear really good things about it and it being a really good like throwback to older JRPGs and that kind of style, because it's a turn-based thing, but it's not going into the problems a lot of JRP- JRPGs having with the whole aesthetic thing with the waifus and crap. Yeah. The- that's one thing it has over people appreciate that. I keep yeah. keep throwing this phone down. But if people keep on hearing good things, people might end up picking it up at some point and it could just be one of those slow burn things. Yeah, I agree. That's the best we could probably have for. Yeah, I would not have I don't have too many crazy expectations for it commercially, but I expect it to be great because I've heard it's great from stuff in Japan. <laughs> yeah, luckily it's already been out for like a year. So. Yep. Yeah. Next so. thing, coming out the same day, Destiny Two for second DLC. I see a lot of people very like very excited for this. Yeah. I don't know much That's about Destiny do DLCs. Well, but... yeah, I mean, yeah, it's Destiny. I, I mean, I don't have anything to say about it. I'm just yeah. saying people seem to be high on this one, yeah. so we'll see. Yeah. But I'm, I'm okay. To move we on. have some nerds. Just... <laughs> yep, move on. Next thing, Zone of the Enders 2, September 4th, same day. Yep, I already talked about this. Yep, so I'm um, I might as well put my little initial there. That's, again, that's kind of like one of those You're things. Interested. I am interested There's more than I want to hear how... Um, the VR does it. it. could be a good, like, Christmassy game. Yeah. Black Friday. Yeah. Again, it already starts at 30 bucks. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad at all. 25 I get a physical copy of Best Buy. Um, now, September 7th. The big game. Spoderman. Let's Spo- do it. So, obviously, I'm putting me there. Yeah, like, I, I've... Well, I mean, I guess if this is just interest, like, I think I'm going to play this game this year, whether it's just yeah. waiting for you yeah. to be done with yours, because I'm, spoilers for a few, there's another game I'm going to be getting in September 1st, I've been playing that first, so yeah, put me down, because I'm definitely very interested in it, obviously I think it's been well documented, out of, like, me, you, and Will, I'm by far the lowest on Spider-Man, just because I don't like the Arkham combat, and I'm the highest, <laughs> and there's certain things about it that just the combat doesn't completely look up on my alley with it looks a little too grapply and cinematic and not 100% my speed and that all might just be evaporated because it might just be amazing because it's insomniac and that and we didn't really talk about that much but after the e3 conference they showed like all that web swinging through the city and everything and the fact that like when you like shoot your web if you shoot your web at certain times, it affects like the momentum of your swing. Like it's mm-hmm. actual physics of like, you wait till the, but like the lowest point of your fall and then do it and you can shoot up. What? That's crazy. <laughs> that's, that's so, like, they, 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 we all know how like, they, really, they absolutely did not have to do that. It could have just been, Oh, you throw this, the web up, throw the web up, whatever. Like they actually put way a whole lot of thought. Right, we all know what's really going to happen. I'm going to get this game. I'm going to bring it over. I'm just going to give you the controller. Right in the seat. You're going to swing one time and go out, drop the controller and go out and buy it. Jeff, you know me too well. <laughs> <laughs> now it's going to be great. Everyone could be talking about it. It's going to sell fantastically. Game Busters. Unless it comes out and is awfully reviewed. Yeah, I'm very interested in that versus God of War sales-wise. That's what I'm... Because God of War just had the, the backing of, like, this is one of the best games in the generation. This is, like, you know, com- this is what video games can be. I don't think Spider-Man is going to have that. I think Spider-Man is going to have this is very, very good... But I don't think Spider-Man's doing things that like the video game industry's never seen before. Not that it needs no, to. No, no, no. I think it's going to be a very, 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 very good Spider-Man game, and that's going to be enough to probably sell more in God of War just because. I'll name. say I can, but I, okay, I'm just yeah. saying like God of that's what that's what helped God of War. Like God of War is an established name, but even more than that, it just had so much critical. Buzz. I can see there's definitely a thing. It's not going to review as well as God of War. I just don't see a way that happens no, no, no. unless it just. A lot better than we're thinking. Yeah, like I expect it to be great. Um, but definitely, yeah, like you said, see it's selling more because Spider Man. Like we see this, hey guys, really great Spider Man. Yeah. Game. Yeah. No. Even if it's not like a ten out of ten. I agree. I think God of War will be. I don't think it's going to beat it by much because I think God of War sold in the same amount because of all that critical buzz. But I do expect it to sell more. So. Yep. Okay. Moving on. Same day. NBA Live nineteen. 
yeah. whatever. Move on. We, this, we all know. We all know. You know what we're, what we're into and what we're not. Uh, and it's so I, great. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I, September 14th. Heck yeah, get hype some. Put that D down. <laughs> I'm behind the game, so I'm not even going to put my name down. Uh, oh, yeah. You, borrow my borrow my copy of Rise. Too many games. I know. I um, too many older games I'm talking about playing. But no, like, I'll, I'm the first to admit the Shadow of the Tomb Raider stuff they've shown is not the most exciting things or whatever. It just kind of looks like typical Tomb Raider, but I'm, that's all I needed really. Like it's one of those, like I'm invested enough in these and they're short enough where it's just like, Oh, every two years or so I get another adventure with Laura and it's going to be really, really good. And no one's going to play it, but me, Yeah, <laughs> it's like, y- you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, like I, I know that they're not doing a good job of selling you and other people are who have lapsed and not played it. And I know that like, it's going to perform poorly, uh, the but most- I, I just like, I, I have such a history with these already. And I just like, yeah. I can tell that it's going to be a lot of fun, even if they're not doing a good job of showing. No, here's the thing. I'd be all over this game, even from what I've seen, if I had played, Rise, yeah. Rise, but yeah. because I'm so behind, I haven't done that. I have no reason to be interested. It's in just like yet. they needed something flashy to yeah. finally get people on board with this, and they did not show that. They have me because I was already on board, yeah. and that's what to the point where I'm probably one of the few people where I'm gonna be playing this instead of Spider Man right away because I'm just like I love the series. Hey, so much. and you know what? That'll be good for the podcast it because one of us talk about Spider Man, the other one talk about Tomb Raider. Yeah, and maybe I can throw in some Dragon Quest here and there. That's what like I mean like maybe. Like, the podcast did help that decision, but also, I think I, I'm just, like, I want to play Team Raider. Like, I, that that seems like it would hit the spot. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. So. Hey, here. Next game, September 21st, Spyro Reignited Trilogy. Yeah. Let's go. I'm excited for it, but I'm not going to put it down me getting this. Because... Not at all this year? Pr- probably not, because here's why. There's so many games in September mm-hmm. that I'm probably going to be trying to get through and just other games throughout the whole year. Yeah. Dragon Quest is going to take like a hundred dollars. No. And for Spyro, wait for that Switch version. Oh yeah. Switch might, not yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I forgot about that. You might as well. Yeah. yeah. Might as gonna... well. If I'm not playing and getting any time, you might as well wait for that. Yeah. Which I would expect that spring next year. There's no well, way that's but... not coming out. Right. <laughs> Haven't they already said something? Maybe. No, they have Switch version. The only, it's already oh, yeah. coming to Xbox. I, I th- think PC. I thought they said something about the Switch potential. Or maybe that was just people talking. I yeah. Just... I got to imagine it's because it's the Switch. So, therefore, it needs a little extra time. And because Crash was there. So, we just There's no... I, I don't see any reason it's not. And uh, apparently, Crash is selling well on Switch. So, yeah. I'll just wait for that. I want this game. Apparently, it's um, selling very well on Switch. Yeah. Whatever. And, yeah. I UK, it got to number one. Yeah. It's the fastest selling Switch game in the UK of all year. People like... We we all underestimated that Bandicoot with those jorts. Yeah. Man. Something else in September. It's coming out the same day. Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Torn of the Golden Country DLC, September 21st. Um, boop, boop. I want it. You think you're probably waiting? I'm probably waiting. Give it some time, man. I, mean, I didn't finish Xenoblade that long ago, and... Th- you don't owe Xeno, but you don't have to go in there right away. I know. You can I'm, go in there later. You I'm can not, give it some time, man. I'm not. Plus, also, because... You have a pretty wide open fall, it sounds like, so. Yeah. Um. Also, the fact that they're selling this, I think, alone for $40. Yeah. Ugh. That's a lot of money. Yeah. So, it's like... Well, uh, there's this cheaper season pass. You get a whole bunch of other crap that comes with it as well. Mm. It's weird. It may not be $40, but they have a standalone package for it. So, it's like, okay, this... They're selling a standalone, like, Switch box for it. For this DLC. So that gives me... This is meaty. <laughs> it, it, I would hope it is. Yeah. Therefore, I can wait. Yeah. yeah. I want it, though. It's the perfect thing to have a standalone story DLC for. Awesome. Next game, September 25th, Valkyria Chronicles 4. September is still insane. Kill did me. Did you put a D on there? I did. Yeah, that's it. I'm, I'm, I am probably should play the other Valkyria Chronicles that I bought before mm-hmm. I play 4. I bought one. Yeah. No, that's Jeff. <sighs> is that a day one or is it just you're, you have to see how far you are and everything else here's the thing I mean it's not going to go down in price you might as well just get it but uh, here, here's the thing that my, my thing of this there's no way I'm going to finish um, Spider-Man and Dragon Quest by the time that's out so what I could do because it is not out in Japan yet I could just wait and see how you know, how the Switch version runs yeah and I mean, it's one of those if you're not going to be able to play it, you might as well not buy it until you're going to be able to play it, I guess. But yeah, I can already hear the Switch. I think it's going to run fine because honestly, it doesn't, well, like graphically, it's that much of improvement over one. I don't uh, mean as a negative because one is beautiful. Yeah. Um. So 
might as well wait to see since it's coming out the same day. Just wait to see how the Switch version runs. Huh. And yeah. then if I hear it runs good, get it when I have some free time. Yeah. Because by well, the sounds of it, it's going to be my big Switch single player game of the fall. Of the fall, yeah. yeah. I don't think you need to be rushed for it. Nope. Now, other games are... All these J's in September. Next game. Life is Strange 2. September Heck 27th. Yes. Episode 1. As, of, us both right, as of right now, day 1. Unless... Something just comes out, there's like, oh, it's super racist. I'm like, oh, cool. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm yeah. just trying to think of what could possibly make me not get... We need to play like Captain Spirit, story. man. Why, why do we... Okay, Darby, next podcast, we need to try to play Captain Spirit. Captain Spirit might be super racist. Jeff, we haven't played it. We don't know. Yeah. I think we would have heard. <laughs> I would have heard. Yeah, no, I'm totally... I think we just need to go ahead and plan to try to do that by next podcast. Yes, and we... Maybe make that the main topic or something. Topic. Yeah, I'm down with that. Yeah. Just be like... Make sure you went and played Cat and Underpants. It's free. You yes. <laughs> yeah. You have no excuse. Yep. So, yeah, we're getting, we're both getting that game. Yeah. It's life is strange, dude. Yeah. And the fact that it is episodic works in our favor as far as it coming out in September. So we can just squeeze it in for a few hours in between. Oh yeah, because it, it'll be probably no more than two or three hours to yeah. just go through. And, yeah. We are excited. Um, next game, Code Vein, September twenty eighth. I'm, I'm very interested, but I'm not buying yeah. it. I mean, like, I, that's, you know, I'm interested to see what other people think about it. And then maybe three years from now, I'll be like, oh, yeah, Code Vein. Yeah. Yeah, sure. But, yeah. Unless something unless something just changes and it's amazing. But, yeah. yeah. I got a feeling it's not going to sell great. I don't feel like there's a I whole f- lot. Of- I, I, I feel like we, I've been seeing it pushed a lot, like, as far as advertising goes. But I feel like whenever I see a trailer, it's very samey. But yeah. and then no one talks about it. Yeah, it, I, it's definitely the kind of the forgotten game in the giant yeah. bunch. So no, I don't expect too much from it, but it could be a surprise. Yeah, we will see. It's one of those games that evaded reviews well. Would definitely help it big time. Yeah, because it's only like soulsy game or then. Right, let's move through some of these yeah. fast. Okay, okay next game, there. FIFA nineteen, September twenty eighth. We sell great. We're not yep. getting. Um, Forza Horizon four sell great. We're not gonna get. October 2nd. Mega Man 11, October 2nd. What, where are you on Mega Man 11? I don't feel like we've talked about Mega Man 11. We haven't. I am interested. What they, I'm not as down on the art style as a lot of people were, at least in the beginning. Yeah, I don't like it, but... I like it okay. Um, it's From what it sounds like people play it E3, it plays great. It's like Mega Man. That's great. Mm-hmm. Um, But I'm a little behind. I didn't play 9 or 10, and I think I ended up, because of all this crazy... Humble Bundle and all this free crap or whatever. I think I got Mega Man Legacy Collection 1 and 2 at some point. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Somehow. I, I, I think I, I remember I, I think, you saying, yeah. I think with Humble Bundle I got it. Mm. Because it was a Capcom um, Sega Humble Bundle. Mm. I think that was in there. So I might as well wait to play those first. Yeah. So, not anytime soon. But but I imagine it to do well. People are right. very high on it. The people yeah. who've played it and seen it played yep. are very, very happy. Also on the Sunday, Fist of the No... North Star Lost Paradise. You have no idea what this is, do you? Nope. It's an anime game. It's a Shonen Jump thing. Um, you might recognize the guy if you saw... I feel like I've heard you guys say Fist of the North Star. But... Yeah, it's apparently a, made by the Yakuza guys. Ah. Yakuza style game, kind of, but very That's even more anime. That's promising, at least. Yeah, so this is one of those games where I could... S- I'm not going to put it down for me, but if I hear it's really good down the line, potentially. Yeah. Yeah. I don't expect this to sell great, though. Mm. Um, just because everything else, it's... Uh, this is the North Star, not the most popular thing in America. Right. Um, now, something I do expect to sell well. Assassin's Creed Odyssey, October 5th. Yes. Yeah, it's definitely going to sell well. Assassin's Creed has never been my thing, and I don't think them adding a few RPG elements is going to make it my thing. It's definitely a step forward. It, it makes it... I'm a lot like it makes it more interesting to me, and I applaud the RPG elements. I'm 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 here for the dialogue trees and everything, and I appreciate what they're doing over there. But it, I'll I'll replay Witcher. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I still need to play Witcher. Um, now something on October fifth, we're actually kind of interested in Super Mario Party. Yeah, I'll just put J slash D. Yeah, I mean like they they, they probably have to unsell. Mario Party, just as a collective experience that we're all going to like, whether it's one of us get it and the other, you know. Like, it's definitely something we need to wait for reviews for because they've had, 
The last couple have not been yeah. good. <laughs> but like I'm I'm in for the idea of it and, and they haven't shown any reason why it would be bad. Yeah, before, and, so. and only one of us needs to get we can split it yes. with yeah. Alex and Olivia if they wanna. I'd be down for that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And we can... No, it looks I mean like I just want to co- just keep collecting those multiplayer experiences for the Switch and just have an ever-rotating list yeah. of games that never get old. Like, Nintendo knows the formula at this point. They know what they're doing with yeah. that. Next game, October 12th, Call of Duty Black Ops 4. Um, it's going to sell great. I'm interested to see how great because of how it's changing things up. I mean, I'm interested to see if it if it is less than World War Two. Yeah, or, and even less than I, I'm. I'm we, 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 I want to see where it stacks up to. Ha, have you listened to the Easy Allies podcast? Yeah. Dear Lord, that what I don't know if they were confused at every like if they got some <laughs> stuff wrong out of confusion. But if all they say was right, I'm like, what are they thinking? Yeah, it sounded bad. Like, I wasn't sure about that. They, they didn't like fact check anything, so I, I don't know. Like, how was looking it up? Yeah, I mean, do you want to say what they said? I mean, I don't want to like spread misinformation. I don't. Yeah, take this with a grain of salt. I might even remember wrong. They were saying stuff like there was some. There was this weird stuff going on the season pass, like for the battle royale maps. You need to get the season pass for it to get a lot of them. For more immersive I mean, experience, just, or something. It just sounded like there was a lot of things that they're already like way ahead of time, saying like all of this is like blocked behind an additional paywall. When you're paying sixty that, bucks for less stuff, I mean, you look at this it. is not really out of the ordinary for the, for a lot of Call of Duty games. Yeah. I mean, this sounds like it's a step further than that, but they've been doing this season pass BS for a long time, where it's like months and months and months and months ahead of time, they already say, like, you know, we're locking all of this out, so you have to keep giving us additional money for this. And, I mean, like, I think it... I mean, I, I really... Th- I mean, Call of Duty could release a completely subpar bad game and still sell a lot. I think the mechanics and everything is still going to be really good for the people to do it. I don't, I can't, I I don't know. I really don't know what to expect from this uh, Battle yeah. Royale mode. Like, I could see it completely failing. I just, I, I can't see it becoming, like, the next big thing. Maybe I'm wrong, but I just feel like Fortnite has that. Okay, and, let me put it this way. It could be big, but PUBG nothing kind of, is going to get close to Fortnite anytime soon. No, that's that, just the well, fact. That's what everyone's going to be comparing it to, and I probably shouldn't even be thinking about it in that context. It could yeah. be something different. From my perspective, obviously, the one thing that maybe could have made me play another Call of Duty game again at some point would be the story. No, that's out. There's yeah. basically the zero percent chance that I'm doing anything like this. So. Okay, um, next thing for Honor Marching Fire. Oh, I actually can hide that. There's no reason to really bring that because uh, that's an expansion. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, we'll ignore that. I expect it. I expect for Honor to have a little resurgence. Yep. Yeah. I'm not Many more extra game. copies sold. It's a fun game, though. Yeah. Fun game. Starlink, October 16th. With that Star Fox. With that Star Fox. Okay, so my feelings of how this is going to sell are better now that Star Fox is in the game. Yeah. Even if it's just the Switch version. I think it's kind of artificially higher because I still don't think the game's going to be like that much different than everyone was expecting. Like, I don't think it's going to be that great. It's just going to be I, I feel. Fox, I, I feel like, I mean, my feelings of Starlink from what I've seen, I don't expect it to be a masterpiece. I don't expect it to be great. I expect it to be okay. It's going to be there. Yeah. It's going to exist. But this makes people more interested, so... It'll get I mean, more good people for people. Yeah. It's just like, you know... And it could be for some people a Star Fox game they've wanted for a long time. I, I, maybe I'm wrong, but I just really think it's going to be such a small, inconsequential thing. It's just, I mean, it's going to be cool. Yeah. I'm not, don't get me wrong. It's awesome for the, if you're, especially if you were already going to get this, especially if you're going to get this, like, you're a father who's getting it to play with your son. Wonderful. That's awesome. Yeah. And the fact that Star Fox is in there now makes it even better. On the source version only, just kidding, that wasn't clear. <laughs> well, obviously, yeah. yeah. But it's there for, you know, p- p- people. So you, you can show your kid Star Fox when, before, it's like, what are you going to do? Pull up this N64 version that... He's going to be like, this looks old and bad. At least this is a way to yeah. introduce Star Fox to kids and everything, which I, I appreciate. It's just, yeah. you know, this is not going to be a Star Fox game. Yep. This is gonna be- oh, so there's good news. This is also something that potentially could be the news, but whatever. He's- Guillemot said that expect more surprise collaborations between Ubisoft and Nintendo. Yeah, I'm, I'm more excited that this was just basically like, hey, we're keeping this alive. Like, yeah. this isn't the big thing yet, but there's going to be more things coming. And that's all. That's what that showed me, is that yeah. we're doing another partnership. So I'm more excited for the next Mario Plus Rabbids, or even more excited for whatever next when it comes to Ubisoft. Yep, okay. Also, October 16th, LEGO DC Super Villains. My feelings on this is, it's going to be a fun LEGO game. Yep. It's going to sell... Oh, Lego I game numbers. Never hear about them being anything less than good games. So, yep. 
Yep. yep so. Do -do. Try to Let's see. Battlefield Five. It will sell great. I assume. Yep. I, it seems pretty unremarkable as far as like nothing new, crazy going on, but it doesn't look bad either. So it's Battlefield. Yep. Okay, and obviously we're not gonna get it. Soul Calibur Six. October 19th as well. I'm not getting it. I really appreciate Geralt, and I'm very happy they did that, and I wish I could show my support to, with, to them about getting Geralt without spending money, but that's the only way to do it, so I'm not doing it. Um, I don't expect Soul Cal this to sell all that much. I kind of feel like Soul Calibur's days have come and gone as far as yeah. popularity. I don't think it's going to do bad, necessarily. I just don't. I could see... Let's, let's put it this way. It's not going to be them... Namco Bandai's best-selling well, I, I fighting see, game this year. I could see Namco Bandai overestimating this game yeah. like because the resurgence of soul, soul caliber and stuff and i don't feel like it's gonna be quite yeah. what they might expect to or what soul caliber has been in the past i just don't i don't see it but maybe i'm wrong i yeah. want i hope i'm wrong october 23rd just dance 2019 uh it's gonna sell great no way in the world we're getting it yeah red dead redemption 2 day one right now baby <laughs> day one right now going to sell great put 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 my, put my oh, name uh, down i just went ahead and did it oh okay it is like you um, just assume, uh, Jeff. I, sorry, no, I'm assuming you're buying it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's we've talked enough about Red Dead. It's yep. getting, getting but but Darby, right. Darby, this was before the Red Dead Killer was announced for that day. My Hero One's Justice, same day. My Hero Academia fighting game. Never, Jeff, can you take my name off of the Red Dead? Yeah, I yeah. have other things. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as far as my hero goes, sell okay. It's it seems like it's just kind of one of those. Lower effort kind of anime tie-in fighting game. Is this My Hero Academia? My Hero Academia. Okay. Yes. I mean, does it does it look not great, like quality wise? Um, you know those Naruto games? Yeah. It kind like of that. like a lesser version of that, if I'm being honest. Okay. It has a cool style to it, and I like their character selection they've done. But hmm. I've seen. I don't know if this is like. I don't know if this is like carrying over to the general public in large, but I'm in a kind of funny Facebook group, and I feel like the last few weeks I've seen a lot of people talking about My Hero Academia mm -hmm. when I never see people talk about like anime hardly at all. But oh no, a lot no, of no that's been a thing for like the last like, like year or is so. It's just Darby? getting a lot, lot more popular. I'm oh no, this game's probably gonna do fine, but yeah, yeah. yeah. this might be a great game. Mm -hmm. um, next thing, Overkill's The Walking Dead. November 6th, I don't know what to say about this game because I still feel don't like know no what one... it is. I'm sorry. It's like a Left 4 Dead type game, it looks yeah. like. This game could be the next big thing. It could be a wash. We can't be experts on every side of the video game. Because I don't feel like so. anyone's talked about this, but if it's like Left 4 Dead-like and it is good, and with the Walking Dead brand, it could do pretty well does if the it's Walking... good. Does the Walking Dead name still carry weight? I don't know. I feel like it doesn't, but it helps. I mean, I mean, it, it's better than nothing, but yeah, I don't know. This game is a big question mark, but if I had to guess, I would say do mediocre. Yeah, me too. Mediocre. But this next one, I hope doesn't do mediocre. Hit me to November thirteenth. Might as well put my Still name boy. down now. I hope it sells well, especially with IO yeah. sticking the neck out there, going independent, yeah. all this other stuff. I definitely want this game. I probably will because. Just the way it's set up, even if I don't go straight through, it could be a game I just play a mission to every now and then. Yeah. And yeah, go through it. And, just and so But I want to play the regular Hitman first, which we started doing. We did. We, we played had a, a good time. Bit. Yeah, had a good time. A good Definitely time. do more of that. Might do a Let's Play for it. And I want to, like, I want people to support them. I hope, I hope it and, goes well. And, yeah, that's my first game, maybe other than Mario Party, like, in a two-month period, so. <laughs> <laughs> so that increases my chance of getting that significantly. And... Makes me question about these dates, but November 14th, the next day, Fallout 76. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> what days would this be? Whatever, they're around. It's the Wednesday. Um, around November, but um, I I cannot, in good conscience, like, I can't put my name on this for this thing yet because it's such a question. It, it seems like you're, you, you're down on everything, but the fact it has the Fallout name. Yeah, but I'm not like so down that I couldn't be un like. I oh no no, it's just, and it's like not like, like oh this is all for you. Like I'm just not yeah. interested. Type I have a very good feeling it's just not going to be for me, and I think it, even it might be a really good game. It's just not mine, my type yeah. of game. So hey, yeah, Braids Two may potentially from Bethesda next year. And you showed some interest in that. I did. Like that gameplay was really good. Yeah, a really really good gameplay trailer. Next game, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. I've said enough about this. It's going to sell great. <laughs> Hell no, I'm not getting it. <laughs> Um, next game, Just Cause 4, December 4th. I don't know how these games sell. I, I guess they sell well enough. I can't tell you. I, enough for them to get the 4. 
I'm doing it for the next game, Dark, don't worry. Okay, I was about to say. <laughs> okay. Um, last game that has an exact date, then we'll just quickly run through games that just have a release window. Super Mario Bros. Ultimate, December 7th. We are both getting, unquestionably. It's going to be one of the best-selling Nintendo games. I feel like the, I mean, it's not going to beat Odyssey. Might not beat Mario Kart. Are those the top two Switch games right now? Probably, yeah. Right under there, does that sound about right? Because, <laughs> like, I see it being, I never Z- see it being Zelda. Zelda. Yeah. Beating Splatoon, whatever else is up there. And I think yeah. it's it's going to it's gonna be a system seller. It's going to help um, the Switch get to that 20 million. Yep. They're that the and year. the Pokemans. Yeah. No. Okay, now quickly going through the just one. Oh, of wait, sorry. Let's Go is probably going to sell more than Smash. So, <laughs> questionably. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's going to be number three. Actually. No, Pokemon Let's Go is probably going to be the best selling game. I hope it doesn't beat Odyssey, but it probably will. Between both versions? Yeah. Yeah, it will. It will. Yeah. It will. It's sad. Okay, next thing. Session, um, the skateboarding game, coming out quarter three, at least early access. Oh, it's still supposed... I didn't even know it was supposed to come out this year. Um, at least early access. I like that every... Awesome. Like, the when I've looked into it more since E3, I think a lot of people like me didn't even really know much about it. It's all before then. It really actually was like the people making it are trying to make a skate successor because yeah, yeah. then because EA is not yeah. making one. So that excites me a lot. Everyone who's played it said it played really poorly, but that was a long time ago yeah. apparently. Like, it's been a while. So like if it comes out and like reviews say like, yeah, this is straight up skate four, I'm like, sweet. I'm down. You want like, to put your name on here? Sure. Early access? I mean, I, like, because, like, if it is Skate 4, and, like, I don't want them to get cute with it. I literally want it to be, like, I hate to be that guy, but I want it to, like, really feel like this is supposed I, to be I a Skate think that's what they want, press. Like, it, I've looked at the same stuff yeah, you have, yeah. Like, I don't want it to kind of, like, they can kind of put their own spin on it, but I really want a Skate game. So, like, if it's that, then, yeah, sure. Okay, no. next we got a string of um, PSVR games, Transference, Tetris Effect, and Astrobot. Transference seems pretty cool. I'm not interested in either of the other ones. Are you interested in Tetris Effect? I'm. Ha- I have some interest in all those. I'm, be honest. Yeah, I, I'm not super interested in Tetris Effect, but Transference looks pretty cool. Tetris Effect, I need to see more from, but people have really liked what it's. Weird Elijah Wood horror. I'm I, <laughs> again. This isn't. I'm buying. This is. I'm interested in Astrobot. I'm more interested in the other two games because you remember the playroom thing with the little robot. Is that that? It's yeah. a full game, yeah, and they yeah. put a lot more thought into it. And right. people who played it said it's awesome. I'm probably all in on that. Yeah. So. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely. That's I want to play that on yours with you. Yeah. yeah. Next game, Tales of Vesperia, definitive Let's edition. Go. This winner. This winner. Somewhere. I'll just put J slash T. Yeah. I mean, probably only one of us will get it, but that, we're both gonna play it. So. Yeah. Get it on that I, I mean, Switch. I don't mind going in on it with you yeah. if you want, but yeah. Get there on that there switch. That there switch. Yep. Yuri and the boys and girls. Yep. Um, Team Sonic Racing, late 2018. Hell no. Yeah. Uh, if it comes out and I just hear it's great, potentially, probably not. Probably not. Yeah. I got Mario Kart. I'm good. Yeah, we got all these other multiplayer games. We're probably good. Sorry, Sonic. I expect this out okay, maybe at best. Nah. Depending on it. Yeah, probably not. I think, tra- I think the Transform Racing did okay. Um. Yeah. Um, Darasine, Darasine, that from software VR thing. Don't know enough about it, but I'm yeah. interested in the fact, the thought of a from. I am interested for yes. sure. Yes, you. Apparently, you have it's, my interest. Apparently, it's eight hours. You still have my interest. Yep. Next game, Killer Queen Black. I could totally see us getting this game. I'm I just gonna totally put J slash D for game. this because we watched the let's play. Do we know price yet? Because that's a big deal. That's a no. big deal for me. No, like, I don't think we'll know for a little bit until it gets a release date. It, I hope it's a lesser price because I mean it just. I gotta it imagine it's no more player. than twenty bucks. I, that's I, my my mind goes to twenty at max thirty is, but I I think more twenty. But. Yeah. Because it sounds like not much other than that mode, which is fine. No, if yeah. for 20 bucks, that'd be fine. Because yeah. we watched kind of funny do a Let's Play from the E3 floor, and we thought it looked really cool. It's like there's a lot there to think about because you got to mm. manage between like three different objectives. Yeah, if you haven't, sure. definitely go um, watch some gameplay of Killer yeah. Queen Black. Because, I mean, like, and, and, but even like looking at the gameplay, I don't feel like it, like, I haven't even played it, but I kind of feel like watching the gameplay, I can tell. Like, seeing other people playing and everything that's going on, I'm like, this looks like a lot of fun to play, but not a lot of fun to watch, because yeah. it's just, like, kind of hard to know what's going on, and it looks kind of primitive, pretty, but primitive, yeah. primitive and stuff, and it's hard Maybe to Maybe it was an arcade game. <laughs> yes, exactly. But, 
I think playing it, just thinking about the how how many different layers are going on in one screen, sounds like a bunch of fun. And everyone who's played in arcades love it. Like there's communities that just play this in yeah. places. So, yeah. so we had a bunch of that. Next game, Concrete Genie. I have some interest in this. Interest, not enough to yeah, yeah. put it down. Ashen, I forget what the game that was. What? Ashen. Ashen. I don't think I know this one. I think it's a. I think it's a cool indie game. I think it was one of those games Microsoft kind of said. I think it's gonna be on Game Pass the day it releases. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Um, last game we're gonna go over: Mutant Year Zero: Road to Eden. That's the biggest game, but <laughs> that's what we. That's the way the list was made. That's supposed to be this year. Apparently, yeah. Huh. That's okay. it right now. It's, it's a smaller thing, so they could announce the release date this month for August or something. Be like, I mean, cool. remember, they weren't at E3. You're right, yeah. I don't think, yeah. This is another one that's like, from concept wise, I'm in. I just or am I getting Biomutant mixed up? <laughs> yeah, your yeah. Biomutant guys weren't there. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know that. if they were there either, but I think they were. I don't know. Point is, they I'm can always certain it. Biomutant is supposed to be 2019, but I'm, yeah. I might be wrong. But anyway. No, I, I think I can develop for it most of I looked, and this is supposed to be 2018 as of right now. Yeah, yeah it's very easy. It does. Yeah, I'm definitely interested, but. You know, let's put it down there. I want to see more. If it comes out a good time, depending on how I do with these other games, it could be one I get because I have free, you know, time. Time. You won't be you won't be riding around as a cowboy like me. Like, I'm one of the few. Like ev- like I <laughs> yeah, hear all these podcasts. Like everyone's gonna be playing Red Dead. Everything every, time is gonna stop. Everyone's playing Red Dead. Oh yeah, like, I mean, get ready for four straight weeks of Red Dead talk on every podcast you listen to, including this one. <laughs> Make sure you get well on that one. Well, all right, happens. that's 2018. Yep, may that's, not every game, but I think we got we hit all the big ones. A lot of big ones. That looks like a pretty damn good year, Jeff. Yeah, I'm interested to see like. How many games we both put down? <laughs> sure, Jeff it's me. I, I, yeah, there's, there's a, a lot of J's there, but it's not uh, many more unless you count those VR games that I just put down because I have a yeah. good bit of interest. It's no 2017, but it'll, it mm-hmm. looks pretty good. Though. Yeah, 2018. I have no complaints. Yeah. So okay, but, I do have one complaint. Everything is September, <laughs> <laughs> and you, you have 30 minutes of complaints about let's go. Uh, put, Pikachu, whatever. It could have gone uh, longer. On there. <laughs> Too gen- but that's about release. That, that's about general releases. That's just about one game, Darby. This is true. This is true. Let us know what you want to buy and um, check out all of our other stuff. We just released the. I know this is a long one, Jeff. It's a long one. I figured. <laughs> Strap him. But um, uh, uh, we just put out a God of War spoiler cast. Kind of long overdue, but it's finally up there with Mr. William Outlaw. Finally, a game we all three played. I know. Hey, spoilers, it's pretty good. Uh, and that is full spoilers, so make sure you play the game before you go watch yeah. that. And check out our Pokemon Nuzlocke. That I'm still putting up weekly episodes. I've not missed a week yet. It might be happening at some point soon. We'll see. I've been enjoying that a lot, so check that out. And keep keep it locked. What? <laughs> keep it locked into uh, keep it locked. To Nerds at Large. Okay. Yeah. Yeah.